Okay, we're live. Hi, Steve. Welcome back. We missed you yesterday. Thanks for commenting on the uh, latest uh, YouTube short. Uh, the YouTube short involved, what did it involve? Involved Jimi Hendrix doing, hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Where are you going with that gun in your hand? Classic blues number. Classic blues number. Welcome to the show. I am Rachel's Ghost. These are my records. As part of them, I got more over there and I got more over there. I'm a record collector and uh, I had a great meeting with uh, Pat from uh, Pat's uh, radio. What's what's this channel? Pat's Radio 89, I think it's uh, how what he calls himself. Uh, you know, everybody's got their channel name. Well, not everybody. You're just Steve Park. But um, I got my uh, I got something in the mail yesterday. I'll talk about that in a bit. We got an interview coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be a truncated affair with a um, how do I put it? It's going to be a, a two hour show tomorrow rather than three. Then we're going to cut production and then I'm going to get the uh, fantastic plasma plastics on fantastic plastics. I've got uh, their album here. Uh, let's see. This is the cover of it. The fantastic plastics uh, dimensions in stereo. Beautiful stereo. Uh, here's the back of it. Uh, these kids are, uh, I think they're out of Ohio, and they're definitely Devo fans, and they are, anyway, uh, very good, very good. You was, I had Scoozy dancing yesterday. Sue's going to be joining me shortly here. She's getting herself set up. We got her exercise. Yeah, we went to the mall a couple of times. Now, I'm <laughs> hoping, I'm hoping, fingers are crossed, check out the connection and everything. I'm hardwired in today. So I got this, I bought this wire. Look at that. That is what that's tying me to you kids. And I hope it holds up. I hope it holds up. Anyway, uh, so uh, so we're hardwired in because the CPU on this computer is not that strong. Sue's computer is a lot stronger. You know what, Sue? I'm just going to hit you the link just yep, like this. So you come up this way. Yep. You can come up through street level. But I've listened to Hackney Diamonds in its entirety yesterday. See, I got a sneeze. Here's how you do it. Help us when you sneeze. All right. There we go. Uh, okay. Wyoming Dave's here. Oh. Seems good so far. Hey, John. Yeah, let's hope for good things. So we're hardwired in. What's going on there, Scoozy? Headphones. Oh, okay. Yeah, she got to do the headphones or she'll start squelching. Uh, okay, Hackney Diamonds we're going to talk about. Also, I have a giveaway to announce. Uh, there's only 26 of you in here, so uh, I'll, I'll repeat this a little later. But I just yesterday, I picked up this 4K <coughs> Ultra HD. I like this movie. My buddy Waxed is not so much a fan. I like it a lot. But I'm a, I'm a comic book person, right? I was raised on comic books, and this is a comic book... Uh, Originally, you know, and then they've uh, this is a live action adaptation. Anyway, it's great. Um, I've got this film here. I just got the Criterion. This is the two disc DVD collector set, complete with hype sticker. Uh, the Great Escape on DVD, right? So very nice box. If anybody would like a copy of that film, I watched it the other day. I got to admit, I got a little teary eyed watching it. Just that, you were blubbery. Well, I just get I get emotional with it. Yeah. <laughs> and then this is a great David Lynch film. Very creepy. You know, here's the deal, right? You get your... Um, okay, now are you ready to go, Scusi? Yep. You get your uh, 720 uh, resolution, then it goes up to 1080, and then it goes up to 4K. So uh, some of these, I'm not replacing everything. Some things I'm... Now, what are you doing there? I have to have a notepad ready. She's got to have a notepad ready. There's all sorts of notes that well, occur. You're the producer. And can the you producer. My... Yeah, I'll do it. Just settle the, the little, hell in. Little, little, little. My God. It's I mean, t- this is my monologue, and you're totally ruining it with your <laughs> producer uh, proclivity. I love it. All right. Ready? Go. Yep. Coming in. Here she is. It's Goosey. Morning. All right. So I'm hanging out today. All right. So anyway, blue velvet. Okay. So I want to send somebody blue velvet. It is creepy with uh, the great escape and 
Also, uh, my DVD, because I've just upgraded this DVD to 4K, okay? So 4K. So I got the power. I got the system rocket. So if anybody would like these uh, films, uh, they're yours. I will just give me your, you know, email me, and I'll gift them to you and say, hey, man, enjoy these, because I like them. And the interesting thing is I already own this now. I upgraded and I upgraded, and I upgraded. And so, I mean, I could just kind of dump these anywhere. These are uh, whatever the, what region are we? We're the NTSC, North American market. So if you're in North America, you, or if you have a region-free Blu-ray Blu player, whatever, uh, these three DVDs are yours. Just let me know, and I'll mail them to you. So again, by way of reminder, we got 41 people in now, and I'm grateful for everyone being here. Um, the Fantastic Plastics are going to be joining me tomorrow at 8 o'clock, okay? So I start at 6 every morning. We do this every day, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. And uh, so we're going to cut the live stream short, and we'll do a two-hour show tomorrow on Sunday morning. And then these... Uh, these kids are going to come and join me, and we're going to talk about their band. They're very, very good. Uh, Marvin's got a link to do. Rachel, no closed, no closed caption on this. All right. that's the, well, Can you pull that up, Scoozy? The Marvin Musical Minute? <coughs> Sorry. And then, I'll, you know what? I'll, you'll be the one to play the Marvin video today. That's how oh, we'll okay. work it. Okay, so what do I do? Just copy the link? You copy the link, and, and so it'll open up in a, just copy. go go to page or whatever it'll say. And then it'll take you to the Marvin video. What you want and it to should show up there Where once it goes. In here, in a new tab? Yeah, it'll open a new tab, like the video. Oh, Jesus. Okay, let me hang on, everybody. So, <laughs> hi, everybody. Photo bomb. Okay, so. Okay, I copied it. Okay. Uh, oh, there, no. That's you need it here. Do let me give me the mouse. Give me the mouse. Give me the mouse. Give me the mouse. All right, hang on. I'm gone. Okay, where's Marvin? Marvin's there it there. is. So all you do is this. Okay, where's Marvin? Oh, you need to be in. Uh, you need to be here. And in then YouTube. You, yeah, in YouTube. Well, that and helps. And then, well, I know. Okay, Jeez. hold on. Oh shit. Okay, hold on. I can do it now. Just. Anyway, where where oh there it is, Marvin. Okay, so you just double click, go to channel. Boom, there's Marvin. And oh, hold on, that's not even what you want to do. <laughs> anyway, because what you want to do is not go to his channel, but go to the video. There it is. This thing. There it is. There it is. It's playing. So what you do when the you get these videos? Okay, so you put it right to the beginning, or he'll get mad at you. There, you read it at the beginning. Then once it starts playing, and here, now you go back in the stream area. See down below, you can present it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you'll you'll go present and get it and, and grab that video when it's time to play it. He does he has his well, time. We'll try. He may not be ready to play it yet. No, no, it's pretty early. We're just getting started. We apologize. Okay. Uh Rachel, you have a new glow on Sue's camera. Clearly, she was using special catfishing filters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ruth Ann, this is hilarious. Good morning. It's time again for Nanaimo Squares. That's pretty much what it is. It's called the lamp, everybody. Yeah. It's called uh, the lamp. Now Spinning TV. Holy crap. It's been like a year since you've been here. Now Spinning TV. When did the last time you were here? Let me see. I don't even remember who you are. Uh, I like. I know who you are. Now Spinning Sean. Hi, Sean. Welcome to the show. <clears throat> Uh, okay, best time for a long, long time of the ghost show. Holy smokes, says uh, uh -oh. where did I go? Oh, well, you took yourself out <laughs> because you closed out. Just hit back, close that, and go back. Okay, sorry, or right, open up, open that up. Yeah, you got to go in and redo it all. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> she kicked herself up. Uh, Rach has a nod to you, Jill Pines here. Uh, Rach has a nod to you. I now say holy smokes every time I hear something ridiculous. Hokey <laughs> smokes. I can do hokey smokes or holy smokes. I do a combo. Okay. <laughs> Keep it alive and happening. Are you ready to go? Yep. All right. Hang on. There you go. There's your link. Holy shite. <laughs> uh, when you get, okay. Yeah. 
so anyway, it's good to have everybody here. Uh, Jimi Hendrix is the latest short. It's so pretty. Is it? I she did at such it a good job on okay. it. This is Sue's artwork again, doing her thing. Okay. Okay. You're the producer extraordinaire. This is what you're calling <laughs> yourself. What a God! It didn't take you long to get a massive ego. <laughs> okay, Marcella, like let's that. get into it. Let's get into it. Here we go. The meat of the order. Uh, today's topic, Hackney Diamonds. I listened to the album in its entirety. Uh, Rich, I like your framed Dylan photo on the wall. It looks good. Yeah, isn't that cool? Love that it. thing is from a, he's in a French metro uh, in uh, Paris in like uh, 1965 or so. And he's just playing chess there. And uh, there's a number of shots of him doing it. Uh, so the, uh, clearly there was not one, just one photographer. There was a whole bunch of, you know, the press was around him as he was sitting having a smoke playing this game. And it's just a great casual shot. Now, of course, I love chess. I play chess yeah. myself. I'm on chess.com. Hey, if you make me big, they can see it better. The oh, better. well, you know, there you go. There it is over Sue said. On the other side, don't tell Loki, but I got the Gallagher brothers. I got uh, Liam and Noel. I guess I could bring it over. Nobody ever sees the damn thing. You want me to get it? Nah, you know what I'm thinking more? I'll probably do I should get it. Hey, off. you can switch it. Let's switch that. Put it. Let's put Liam here for to bug Loki all day. No, I don't want to bug Loki. No. Okay, you we're get, I'm trying to get into it. I'm going to tell you what I think about this stone. So stones still kick ass. Here's my thing. I've got a different take. <laughs> which would not surprise anybody about this, about me or my Stones proclivities. I like the Rolling Stones. I got a lot of, I got the Stones and Mono back there. I've got a whole bunch of solo, you know, Stones albums, right? They're from their catalog. I got, I don't know how many Stones albums I got, but I've got a lot. And I've got most, I got most everything in their main studio production output. There's some gaps here and there. But if you say you got goat's head soup, yeah. Thanks to Nick Rudeau, I got uh, goat's head soup. I've got uh, Steel Wheels. That's the concert. I saw them live uh, during Stu, uh, Steel Wheels. Why is Zoo attacking me? Okay. <laughs> so I listened to the album on YouTube, right? Uh, okay. Uh, Rach, I tried getting a CD of Hacking Times, but they were all gone. Joe, uh, that's crazy. That's crazy. Roasters are so good in stereo. I'm here's my impressions though, without headphones or anything, just through a YouTube on my TV. I think it's a good album. I don't think it's a great album. I think it's a good album. I think they I think it's a rock album, and I like that about it. It's like the stones going back to their roots in some ways. There's even a blues number to wrap the whole thing up with. Apparently, Paul and Ringo are on there. For one of the songs, Lady Gaga's in there. Lady Gaga, her, her role in this thing is to be the lovely lady who sang with uh, Gimme Shelter. So the stones are kind of throwing a mirror up and reflecting themselves. So the Lady Gaga is kind of like uh, Gimme Shelter in 2023. Some of the riffs you're kind of going to listen to and you go, Okay, I get what they're doing here. Like this is a throwback to fill in the fill in the blank name the song. So, so for that reason, I call it. Uh, you need to listen more than one time, Rach. Well, listen, Ivan. I'm telling you, I've been around the block a few times. I know this band. I was born in 1958. I was aware of the Rolling Stones in 1965. Is where they they come into my consciousness in 1965. The big joke on the school ground. You hear about the Beatles? No, what happened? You're seven. They got crushed by the Rolling Stones. You go, what? <laughs> I knew who the Beatles were, but I didn't know who the Rolling Stones were. And that's how I found out about the Rolling Stones, through that joke. And then, of course, um, you know, uh, the, the big hit, you know. I uh, Can't Get No Satisfaction, 1965. That was the big hit. So then I learned about that, right? 1965 was also the year I learned about the name game. Sue, Sue, Bo, Sue, Banna, Banna, Bo, Boo, Fee, Five, Fo, Foo, Sue. All right. So, no, it's a good album. It's derivative of themselves. They play to their strengths. They play to themselves. 
It's the stones covering the stones, if that makes any sense to you. And I bet you some people will, will groove and dig on what I'm saying. They'll go, I get that. <laughs> but some people will go, I don't get it. All right. But uh, so, I, you know, I'll play it again and I'll buy the thing. I'm going to go buy it. But I, you know, I'm still convinced it's a good album, not a great album for the reasons I say. And usually my gut reaction, my intuitive, instinctive reaction is going to be the right reaction. It seldom steers me wrong. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The name game. Yeah, yeah. Sean goes, I got the album. Surely, what's your name <clears throat> from the name game? Uh, yeah, poor Tucker had an unfortunate name game name. Yeah. Oh, my God. We never played the name game. Didn't you? Did you know, know it? I was just, I was a popular song back then. I mean, I know it, but but uh, I like to hear Keith Richards on lead vocals. Yeah, that it was interesting. It was uh, there was a switch off uh, <laughs> at one point? They had a guest star sing it. As I don't know the back the background or the details too much on this thing. You know who they're who's coming in, but certainly there's one song where Mick uh, lay. You know, he takes off and he doesn't do it. A lot of reverb on uh, Mick's voices. He's in strong voice. Uh, Mick does Mick. You know, Mick sings Mick. Mick plays to Mick. There's so many parodies and imitations of Mick that I think Mick almost Im impersonates himself a little bit. It's what it's what uh, Rob the Wax calls parody, you know, an inadvertent parody of oneself. And this can happen if you stay around long enough. Well, that's what I said. I like him. About his voice. Okay, well, go ahead. It was Tom. almost like parodied in a couple of songs. Well, yeah, but I mean, you that's know, Mick, right? yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's. Yeah. that's I like rolls. the what is this song? Ain't it straight? I know it's only rock and roll, but I like it. I love that song because the background vocals is like you got Mick going, and then you got a lot, bunch of little Micks all stoned in behind him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everybody's there. Yeah. I know it's only rock and roll, but I like it. I like it, you know. Uh, Steve Jordan on drums. I kind of grew up uh, with him. Our dads were best friends. That is astounding, Scott. I mean, that's pretty damn cool, my friend. Uh, rest in peace, Charlie <laughs> Watts. But uh, to have a friend of yours actually become a Rolling Stone to all intents and purposes, Steve Jordan on drums. So, uh, Wow, that's pretty cool, man. Uh, isn't it something? That is really something. Thanks for sharing that. That is pretty much an amazing thing. Uh, do you, are you still in touch with him? I'd be going, hey, can you get me an autograph? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. I would guess maybe, yeah. I'd, like I say, if I send you my CD, can you get the boys to it? You're not really him? an autograph hound? I'm you? not an autograph hound. But Harry, I mean, Harry's Music Room is an autograph mm -hmm. hound. Ah, uh, you're only to make parody videos on you. You're stealing your own videos to make parody videos on the YouTube. Yeah, that would be like that. They only sound like that in '65. Because I think he was parodying the audience and himself. Boy, I love Bob. Boy, Dylan is uh, both of our favorite. We probably my favorite number one solo male artist, Bob Dylan. Mm -hmm. Okay, favorite favorite. And I do distinguish between the boys and girls who sound strange as a transsexual saying this, but I, but I do uh, in terms of what they do, uh, because I, you know, they're so different. The sound is so different between male vocal timber and uh, that of a woman. And so uh, I prefer like for the boys, it's Bob Dylan. And then my favorite gal is Dusty Springfield. I just love Dusty, but I'm a Amy Lou Harris fan. She's certainly right up there for me. Mm -hmm. I like Enya, but it's, is it Enya's voice or is it the music that Enya does? Right. Yeah. I think it's more the music that Celtic uh, haunting Celtic melancholy that just calls to my very soul. Uh, You're so definitely like um Jenny Lewis fan. I love Lewis I love Jenny female Lewis. Artist. Yeah, I'm and she's fan. cool too. Like she's super cool. She is cool. And she's not a kid anymore. No. Interesting thing. There's an interesting psychology with Jenny. She frequently makes mention, uh, makes note of the fact in her music, and, and Jenny Lewis fans, if there's any of you out there, let me know if this resonates with you in any way, shape, or form. But I feel that there is, in fact, a kind of a, a double, uh, uh, there's a kickback effect 
RE, her status as a uh, childless female. Okay, so she's older. She's in her 40s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, mm, yeah. she mentions frequently about children. And she does so sometimes defiantly, sometimes matter-of-factly. But it's a recurring theme. Has anyone noticed this? Let me know in the comments below. Well, I noticed that. And she, um, but maybe that's more in herself. Wow. You know, she yeah. has her own issues with that. Now, Joel's got a new fan, a new artist. He goes, my fave new artist is transgender, but way too intense for most. It's her, she goes by the name of Femtanel. Femtanel. Oh. Holy smokes. Sounds I thought Catholic. you were going to say Femtard. No, not Femtard. Femtard. That's, that's crazy. Uh, okay. Uh, if it's their, going to be their last, it's not a bad Stones album. 15-year-old me would have loved it, and that's the way I'm approaching it. I say it's a good album, not a great album. And through no fault of uh, Scott's friend, I can try. You you, uh, you know how it is. That guy is uber busy between Stones, Betty LeVette, John May Mayer, etc. He works all the time. Wow. One of the great things, if you're a musician, is to be a working musician. How many musicians are out of work? And music, as you know, anybody who's ever been in a band or involved with ba working bands, clubs go through things where they go, we're doing all canned music. Live bands aren't a thing. And then that phase comes out, and then it comes back in again where it's live music with the band again. And then there's work. But when they go into those, you know, other issues, and that's it. Chanche. Chanche Farage. <laughs> wow, Rachel, that's deep. Well, I'm just, listen, Shanshi, I'm just saying, I'm putting it out there. You tell me. Does that resonate with you? I don't know, man. Uh, they have enough in the can for another album already. I don't think it's going to be their last album. I don't Do think you? it's their last, no. I don't think those guys know how to quit. No. They talk I mean, to, I think, okay, I think those, somebody's going to have to die first. Well, that's already happened. Well, I mean, Mick or somebody. You know. uh, well, yeah, I mean, it, it'll be... the, the band will be gone when when Jagger dies. <laughs> when Jagger goes, God forbid, you know, I'm not Catholic, but let's cover our bases. Uh, when he <laughs> goes, that'll be it, right? We only got 81. Don't bug him for a thumbs up. I only bug him for a thumbs up later in TV show. Uh, but anyway, I think it's a good album and I think, and I don't think it's a great album. I think they're great albums between the buttons and ghost head soup. Uh, tattoo you is a great album, but, uh, this is not to my, in my opinion, a great album. You know, aftermath is a great album. This thing's a good album and it's better than, uh, some of their eighties output because it's true to their rock and roll roots. It's a rock album. Good morning, Chris. Hey, Johnny. Uh, uh, Johnny Al, the legend that is Johnny Al. Uh, if they Keith goes, they could get uh, Jose Ran, Jose Marino Ran on lead guitar. Wow. Uh, Goat's Head is not a great album. Goat's Head Soup is a great album. It's got the incredible song Angie on it. It's got uh, Dancing with Mr. D. That's a great song. Goat's Head Soup. Oh. 1973, The Rolling Stones. It's Isn't a that a goat? It's G O A T. It's the greatest of all time. Oh. It's a G O A T. Goat said it's the greatest of all I time. I guess he so. meant goats. Yeah, yeah. No, well, ghost head. Yeah, no, he means goat's head soup. Well, I was confused. Yeah, I, well, that's because you don't know stones. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> boy, oh boy! If you knew stones, uh, stones, if you would you know. Knew Mick, like I knew Mick. I tell you, man. So I disagree with Maslow on that. I think the Goat's Head Soup is a great album. Uh, there's a lot of things to commend it. And it's very much of its time, and it's got some of that uh, uh, ghetto moxie, you could call it, you know, a little bit. It's, got, it's very much of its time. I love it. And Angie is such a beautiful, beautiful song. I'm a ghost head. <laughs> ghost Head Soup, holy smoke. Uh, Exile on Main Street is my favorite. Many cite that as their very best. Scott, I don't. Uh, Massey goes, it's lazy. Jesus Christ. Listen, Maslow. If I had told you they recorded in San Francisco, you'd change your tune. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, give me Mick by Gil Gilda Radner. Uh, go says Sue, but that's not as tasty as you might think. Best album from the Rolling Stones. Well, you know, there's so many, right? Uh, Ghetto Moxie, too. The Revs got it. Damn straight. <laughs> we love the Revs. Hey, folks, by the way, the Revs starting to do merchandise. Somebody, you can buy your uh, First Church of Jesus Christ, even more Latter-day Saint shirt from the wonderful, the Rev Rock and Roller. We love them. Currently up for award best dressed. That's right. Sue, so what's going on with this one here? I what? got I got on? one hair. That's... Well, do you want me to cut it on? Because no, you don't I moved know... it over. Because you don't know how to comb your hair? Uh -huh. I moved it over. Beggar's Banquet, Let It Bleed are fantastic. Mazzy has pianist coffee already. Tattoo You is a great album. But this new thing, Mazzy, have you heard Hackney Diamonds? I think it's a good album. I don't think it's a great album. Tattoo You is a great album. Yeah, everybody, get over the rev. Support the rev. For the love of God, what the hell's wrong with you? Um, a stone, is that a stone song that's in uh, the Hollywood whatever movie? Yeah, yeah, what, yeah, yeah, which, yeah. What's it called? Uh, oh, 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 oh. That's probably Out of Time. Yeah, that's probably my favorite song. Out of song. Time. Baby, 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 you're out of time. Yeah. You know, and, and like, that's so good, man. I love that song, and I like uh, Start Me Up. Start yeah, me yeah. up. That's tattoo you. That oh, okay. comes off tattoo you. Okay, I love that song. Uh, it's solid. I heard it twice. Get, need to give it time. I've heard it once. I think it's derivative. I think they're playing to themselves. I think they've tried to do. They could call that one song with Gaga. Give me shelter part two. Give me shelter part two. That's what I call that. Very derivative. Nice stand on a blues tune. I like that. That was a nice touch. Going all the way back. Thank you, Aaron. Now Sticky then. fingers is a great album. Uh, Beggar's Blanket, Let It Bleed, too. Yeah, they're great. I like Some Girls. Uh, Some Girls is a great album. Man, that carried us around that summer of, what, 78? 77, 78, when that came out, Some Girls? Yeah, it was probably 78. And we were driving around with that in the car on 8-track. Uh, the one from Vanilla Sky is from Tattoo You and is the best for a moody day. But anyway, yeah, we, I mean, God, we could go into the whole Stones discog discography. Will I get the album? Yeah, I'm, we're going to get it. Of course I'm going to get it. Will it be on vinyl? Will it be on CD? I don't know. Uh, Joe Mayo just was in here. We're always happy to hear from Joe. Joe, we had Beetle Brad on a couple of days ago. That was a lot of fun. That was, that was a, a, a lot of fun. And it, I saw you guys. I went over to your channel yesterday early you were on and watched you and Brad do a thing. That was good, too. Always fun seeing the so, you know the Beatle power players get together. I enjoy it. Uh, get your yeah yeah's out is a great live album. It was one album I like by the Stones says Gary. Yeah, it's a great live album. Uh, get the vinyl. It's got better dynamics than CD. Yeah, but sometimes Massey, it depends on the album. I don't need vinyl for everything. You know, I go, eh, you know, because I'm already telling you, I think it's a good album, not a great album. <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, Some Girls Beast of Burden is where I figured out what Keith and Ronnie were doing. Weaving. Yeah, it's a good song. Uh, I consider Beggar's uh, Banquet through Exile Main Street one continuum. People have said that as well. It's all part of the same vibe. Uh, DJ Vinyl Vertigo. This is Scotty. My band is actually going to perform the entire Some Girls at a Stones Tribute Festival in Tampa in two weeks. Wow. Uh, okay, we had another long intercontinental show last night, Rachel. Chris, what the hell? How long were you guys on for? Uh, what is it with this new marathon streams? This is George Borden has created this back in the early days of live streaming on in the VC. We used to do these long streams that go like eight hours, sort of thing. Usually, alcohol is involved too. Uh, uh Borden's lit la last night, l night. Man in a pit, Borden, last night, night, late, night, stream, two hours of wrong. He immediately deleted it. What the hell happened? <laughs> what the hell happened there? I want to know. Was there nudity? What the frick? What the hell happened there? You got to teach me that. <laughs> uh, I bought the Hackney Blue. Uh, still waiting for it. 
You guys went eight hours, Chris. And were you uh, a little pie eyed, my friend? Anyway, I'm glad you guys have a great stream, great live stream, great fun, great vibe with the jazz bombs. And they're the jazz guys. And I guess the topic was Sue was saying they had Michael Fremer on. I go, no, I think we are misunderstanding. Uh, Fremer's <laughs> got a new album. Like well, he's he's producing an album. <laughs> I think that's kind of cool. It was such a cool. good thumbnail. I just thought. It yeah, was she awesome. loved your thumbnail. But it's uh, here's the deal, Rick. What do you think about like Massey? If if Fremer can produce an album, how about Massey producing an album? Oh, this is good. This is Ringo Slater. Massey produced that. You know. Uh, my son thought George was Jack Black. <laughs> that is funny. All nighters must be the new thing. Well, you know, the young people, you smoke them if you See, got them. See, it says them. Michael Fremer meets the jazz bomb, so. Oh, I guess for maybe Fremer did come on. Did Fremer so, come on? I thought he was on your show. Well, is that live or is that happened yet or is it know. a future date? Let's click on it. <coughs> uh, jazz bombs, no. Interview is live. Michael dies, deep dies new project. Rufus Reed meets Kaylin Cardella. Pre-order is up now. More. Uh, this is on the Insta? Yeah. Yeah. Well, give them a like and leave a comment so they get more engagement. Well, I I didn't see that one on my uh, thing. So they've already got it up. But that would have been a different thing. That's a, probably a different deal. Uh, okay. Anyway, I want to know about this Borden show because it's got me intrigued. Uh, Chauncey. Chauncey Phillips had a great stream. Holy smolies. Uh, the Fremer live stream was great. Hi, Don. Welcome to the show. Yeah, I like him. Fremer was pre-recorded, though, so it's a whole different other. Oh, I see. Okay. I'm just reading the comments, too. Oh. I'm learning, too. Uh, it's live up and running, but it's not. it wasn't what uh, last night's show was about. Two different things happening there. It's kind of like <clears> they <throat> did an interview with, with Michael Fremer. Uh, jazz Bones, Chris, Felipe, Mike, you guys have done so well. Like, you guys are the jazz... You, you know, you're up there in my mind. It, this, you're up there with Ken Metcalf, 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 and the <coughs> Jazz Shepherd. Like you're as jazz worthy as anybody out there that anybody talks about jazz. You guys put it. You raised the flag, and we all saluted it. Everybody knows. If somebody asked me what's a good jazz channel, you channel, you guys would be the first one I'd mention. The very first channel I would mention. Uh okay. Uh, okay. Borden was on the bums. He takes and makes long shows. It was a good one. Yeah, but he, what has, so I'm hearing what happened, Stephanie, is he did another one on his own channel, I guess, and he deleted it. It went two hours and he, and he, he shut it down. Something happened. So this is my, my radar is going off and I'm going, something happened. Whoopi Goldberg. So my whoopi instincts <laughs> are very activated. Uh, thanks, Rachel. You helped us a lot early on. Well, it's so important to support everybody, right? You want to make sure everybody's being supported and, you know, good things are happening. Uh, <laughs> the jazz bums end up talking about Rush again. <laughs> That's I don't believe that. For, well, maybe they talked a little bit about it. Uh, it just needs to stay on track, retain its jazz focus. Yeah, I know, but sometimes there's not a jazz story to be said or talked about. And eventually after, you know, eight hours, you know, could I do eight hours of jazz? Probably not. <coughs> uh, you can uh, learn so much watching the jazz bumps. Yeah, that's for sure. Especially someone like me who who knows a little bit, but not enough to, to know anything, you know. And... Uh, you know, and the culture and everything. I mean, I watch, I'm, we're all exposed to jazz. I'm a movie buff. So I get a lot of my jazz in old films. I watch old films and I go, I know that. You know, that's a that's a good movie. I like the soundtrack in that. And of course it was uh, De Rigger for the, back in the day. Uh, okay, Rachel and Sue cannot stay up all night. No, we don't. We were in bed early. We go to bed early. I we're early to bed, early to rise type people. Like what time were we in bed? Eight o'clock? Probably like eight thirty last night. We eight thirty. We watched an old movie. We watched uh, the Spiral Staircase, which we'd seen before. Yeah, I didn't remember much. I can't remember. I can't believe I didn't remember that giant scary eyeball. Yeah, well, the guy. There, it's a, so it's an old forties uh, murder mystery. 
called The Spiral Staircase. It was very good. It's really good, yeah. Suspense. <coughs> uh, it started uh, Dorothy McGuire in the lead role. And uh, I was trying to think, oh, yes, and uh, Ethel Barrymore, Ethel, the legendary Ethel Barrymore in there. Of course, that's like Drew's great-grandmother or something, Ethel Barrymore. It was good. Um, okay. Uh, Rush was a dial flipper for me. Now I respect them. Yeah, you got to stay, stay the course. Uh, early to bed, early to rice patties. This is... <laughs> This is words to live by by John Shay. <coughs> but what time did you get up today? Like three, four? Three thirty. I was up at three thirty. It's great, great. Well, what what was on my mind? I oh, I know. I had the. Uh, I got this. Uh, these kids are coming in tomorrow. Uh, the fantastic plastic. So two hour show in the morning. Going to shut her down. Then I'm going to restart with an interview. Um, uh, with this uh, with this couple now, I don't know if they're both going to be there or it's just going to be the the fella who I've been talking with. We'll find out. They're good. They're very good. You were you were. Oh, they were great. Them. I they if you want to like jazzercise or whatever, yeah. exercise to music, yeah. that was fantastic. Yeah, they were really. It good. was fun. We were. <laughs> Folks, I want to ask a question. We've been here for uh, half an hour, just over half an hour. How is the feed? Have I been triplicating or going chick, 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 anything like that because we're hardwired in. I grabbed an Ethernet cable to help my poor pathetic computer out and maybe power through a bit better. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Because uh, yesterday I was skipping all over the place. It was brutal. Uh, feed is 100%. Thank you, Seb. No buffering. All right. This is what we want. <laughs> Great. We may have a solution to uh, the previous problems. Thank you, Needle. Needle to Groove. That's a great channel. Channel name. I have to say, you were pretty down about your connection yesterday. I was frustrated. Plus you were super tired. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's much better, they're saying. All right, so this is good. So we've, we've got a, a, a solved problem. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Never say never. The other thing we got to do then is we got to find a way of getting this cable buried or. We'll figure it out. Who got you out the door to buy a cable? The, the my much much better half, you know. She's you're I calm you're everything. Waters. You calm my whole life, you know. <clears throat> you're everything to me. Yeah, I'm volatile. Well, I didn't mean that, I'm a but... volatile <laughs> entity. Uh, man and Pit. We're so glad Man and Pit found the channel and it, it seems to be enjoying uh, the uh, the scenery around here. Man in a pit. Yeah. I'm wondering how Man in a pit got his name. Why'd you Why'd name you yourself Man that? in a Pit? Sue wants to know. Sounds. Uh... Hi, Mark. Good to see you. The feed is fine. Now you need a better camera. His, really? His, well, I've got an, a, a 920, uh, 920C. Logitech. Logitech. So, uh, Jim, whose camera is better? Do I have a better camera? Or maybe you have better lighting. Well, I mean, but lighting is, you can tell, right? We look the same to me. Yeah, the same resolution. Her camera is a cheap knockoff of my really camera. Cheap. Mine's a Logitech that cost about 110 or something. And hers is a $35 Canadian, 30, get this, 35 bucks Canadian knockoff of my camera. I think hers is every bit as good. Hi, Brad. Good to see you. Uh, this is Brad Example. He's a musician. He, he rocks, he rolls. You do good music, Brad. You've got a knack. you got a gift. Uh, I just cleaned my glasses. It's okay. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Oh. <laughs> uh, Nick Pantazzi figured out his uh, name right away. Man in a pit. Dave says I'm a lot clearer. Than Sue you looks are. a lot clearer. You're fuzzier. I don't know if Rachel wants to be unclear. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, you got to switch sides because I keep looking at. Okay, all right, yeah. all right. Sorry, can you guys remind us? Uh, we're still not used to that. That's all when right. we do the double thing. Rachel's camera is better, says Ivan. Rachel's is better. Okay. I don't know. Hi, Clatu Bar. Always good to have Clatu Bar. And by the way, speaking of channels and and people and and things, uh, yesterday's papers looks at the month of April, nineteen sixty six. Really good episode on yesterday's papers. I watched it before coming in today, and I just can't say enough good things about yesterday's papers. It's one of my favorite channels, and he's looking at the year 1966. It's amazing how many people that become household names in the 70s 
are kind of toiling their way around the London music scene in the mid 1960s. 1966, I'm eight years old. That was a big year for me. Uh, 66, we moved from British Columbia to Winnipeg to begin a, uh, what, a five-year period of exile out there in Winnipeg. Ruth Ann feels both cameras are doing okay. Okay. Cherry, okay. <laughs> I need, I owe you a little uh, comment, a look to say what's going on. Deadwax66, welcome to the show. Always good to see Randy. <clears throat> Randy up for the Life Achievement Award, from what I understand. A Life Achievement for Randy. We, we're open for it. It's all up to the Is that academy. Deadwax there? That's Deadwax. Yeah. Hi, Randy. He's, he comes in from time to time. I, got a double I don't know. It, I think it, I don't want to have, you know, Rob gets worried. That, but I just, I think maybe it might have been a bit of Rob waxed rubbing the wrong, Randy the wrong way. I'm not sure. But he took an extended leave from the program. He was almost in memoriam up there with Vinyl Richie. I mean, it was got that. Yeah, serious. Randy's in here. Yeah, Randy's listed. Okay. Randy, you you oh, are. Oh, Randy also companion. He's with yeah, his cat. Yeah, he's got his cat. He's up for two awards. Best pet sidekick. Hey, Randy, what's okay. the name of your um, gorgeous Maine Coon cat? What the name of his cat? His cat. What's the name of your big cat? The Coon cat. Let us know in the comments below. Uh, okay, but sorry, but is there an show? Well, you know, <laughs> boy, boy, I'm used to getting upstaged by Sue, you know. Uh, well, she's lovely. You know what, the green, this Flynn. is more of the real Flynn is the big oh, one. Flynn, okay. Flynn's the big, yeah, I know the cat's name when he mentioned it. I oh, okay, upset. that is one gorgeous cat. Uh, getting ready for work, Andy. Have a great day. Okay, Rachel. Rachel's camera is brighter. More pixels on my big screen. Uh, okay. Rachel's camera is better. Uh, okay. I mean, this it looks the same on my laptop. Yeah, on so my laptop, okay. depending on your resolution. So I think we're okay. I'm not sure what we broadcast. I know I try and broadcast on probably the lowest common denominator that doesn't look like complete poo poo. Well, when you're on, when we watch you on your on the big TV, you're yeah. kind of fuzzy. A little yeah, fuzzy. well, I don't mind being fuzzy. That well, fuzzy is okay. Uh, okay, I'll vote for no one who has a problem with the wax. Let me think about that. I'll vote, vote for, for no, no one. one. I, I'm I not going to vote for anyone who has a problem with the oh, wax. Is that what oh, you mean? Okay, Sean. Uh, okay, wow, still oh. recovering for George Board Friday. Just amazing. Okay, Alex, I need this. I need you to come up here and talk to me yeah, because please. I am no one's saying anything. One, I understand it went for two hours and George deleted it because it was like, it was uh, one for the ages. So if you can give me a debrief, Alex. Alex, we've got, what's happening with Alex? We got his award. He knows he's getting an award. He's, no, he's getting, he's nominated. No, he's getting a special, there, he's got he a special. He knows that already? Yeah, he knows that. There's a special award. Oh. Separate just for Alex. He knows that. Okay. And and it's coming out. No, everybody knows that. This has been announced before. Okay. All right, Alex, get up here. I want to talk to you. If you could, please. Uh, Robert's here. Yo, what's up? We are. It's uh, it's six forty-five in the morning, and we seem to be up. Uh, when is daylight savings this time in Canada? What day? I don't know, man. Canadians. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm staying in a multi-million dollar mansion, razor wire, electric fencing, armed guards, safe as sound. South Africans coming over tonight. They in the semifinal rugby, whatever that means. Holy smokes. Yikers. Okay, thanks, Alex. Okay. Yeah, you got to give the the South Africans their, their rugger. They need it. Uh, time zones. Yeah. Uh, so, Alex, no, we got a separate prize just for Alex. It's all set apart for him. Uh, he, it's for this very reason. What's happening today? He's got an action report from out there in the vinyl community. He is our eyes and ears into the larger parameters of what we call the vinyl community. And without Alex, I would not. I would know a mere fraction of, of what I really know about the our wide and wally beautiful vinyl community that we all love. <coughs> I'm headed to a mansion later with my new tooth for rugby. 
Well, that's fantastic. The rugger is huge in South Africa. So, Stefan, you mean you're heading to the mansion? The one well, we they all both know? got mansions, yeah. That what is with the mansions? Do you have to be in mansions, or the uh, people will come and kill you, or what's going on there? Uh, South African people, <laughs> what the hell is going? A razor wire, armed <laughs> guards, like what the hell's that all about? Yeah, you know, we got a lot of mansions here in town. You go down well in Victoria, we got you go down to Beach Drive. Oh yeah, we got There's no razor wire. You know, okay, here he is. Uh, we love him. It's Alex Dickey. Hey, Al, what? It's Massey. I can't believe you're telling me. Okay, you got the diamonds. I'm happy about this, but yeah. it's a good album. It's not a great album. Well, we, we'll see. We'll see. You may be right. We'll see. I, I, enjoy, I enjoyed it a lot, and it takes usually time. Now, Paulina Almira. Okay. Name, she's an artist that, yeah. that it's not my style, and I've seen her stuff. It's very. It almost looks like digital art, very day glowy and pushed and yeah. fluorescent. And she did this artwork. Crack her open. I, think, oh, I, I think love this. The I don't. Crystal. I think this is the worst album cover for a Stones album. It it's kind of cheap. Now, I get it, but then like they have a gatefold, <laughs> and this is the gatefold. Give me a break. How lazy! Oh is wow. How I don't. I think that's lazy. I get the idea, the concept of the Hackney it's diamond. It's diamonds, yeah. But this is kind of, it's, it looks like a disco record cover. And nothing, not to, di, to di, disparage disco records, it just doesn't fit the Rolling Stones. I mean, it fits the title, I guess. But um, yeah. that's my weak link. <clears throat> anyway. Okay. I, I agree about the cover. I really like the cover, but I don't think it's very Stones. Like, they should have gone with the maybe the broken glass on the windshield Yeah, instead. if, there was, if like the real Hackney Diamonds is that, I would have had them rough and tumble in the street. Yeah. I would well, have the stones in the street with a car. Good photography or good artwork. I mean, there's great. It we, is, yeah. th this whole, you know, Rob Walker started <laughs> this st started this thread that I did. I did my version yesterday of illustrated covers. Oh yeah, I did. And I took part in that. There's so the there's, there's there's good and there's it's like any album. There's good and bad illustration. I just don't think that fits the band. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Michael uh, Mikel Mikel Corey goes. I have the same copy as you, Maz. And I agree, the gatefold's yeah, unnecessary. And this, that looks cheesy. The shards of glass. It looks like a it's very eighties airbrush. Yeah, it, it, it actually you're right. It looks it's not airbrush, but it looks like that kind of air. Yeah, it's there's something about it that's off. And that kind of to mm -hmm. me, an album cover invites you or just or pushes you away. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's part of it. Now, let me ask you: Did you hear? How did you hear the record? Did you stream it? I uh, yeah. Oh, I just over YouTube. I heard some a friend of mine had the CD and I heard it and uh, and the CD is kind of squashed. If the best way to hear it is the vinyl on it. Now I get it. You know, if you're if you're a streamer or if you're a, um, a CD person, I get it. But it, sounds, <coughs> it does sound better. It's not real dynamic, but it sounds actually better. And I'm it's evaluating a flat, not, the production. I thought the production was great. Yeah. Here's why I think it's good, not great. I think they're playing to themselves. Like, it, it, aren't they doing an homage on some that one song I listened to? I go, this is uh, give me shelter. Well, the best thing to do is to play with yourself. Well, you know? yeah, but that, I know, but well, that, that's for yourself. a moment. I got Sue. I'm I thought, listening. oh, play to yourself. I thought, yeah, I thought you... <laughs> no. So I'm thinking, like, you I, know, like I, I'm old. The gag I, of I it is, aren't they? I just think it's like they're. They're doing a remake of Gimme Shelter there. But that's not a bad thing because the, the Stones always had a sound. I mean, I love the Stones. Yeah, and the, whole Beatles, the whole Beatles Stones thing is silly, but the Beatles really kept moving their sounds. The Stones didn't, but the Stones wrote great songs, you know. I mean, yeah, you know, they did never change their basic sound really except maybe they did a you know the disco period and a few other things oh wow most stones lp covers aren't great i disagree well, i disagree strongly about that the 80s stuff or the not the 80s the last few albums i mean the last blues album with the blue tongue i mean the oh, tongue sure. was, one of my favorite i just realized you're wearing a stones t-shirt today. yeah i know Whatever. the tongue album was lazy that's so that looks like a, a k-tel greatest hits cover just yeah, sticking yeah, their yeah, logo yeah. on the cover <laughs> That was terrible. But yeah, you're going to take everything. Well, I'm just going to grab a couple of. Quick, Sue, turn her camera off. off. Turn her mic off. Oh, God. Now, we, you know, we see so many vinyl community bums in all our videos, don't we? 
looking bums. at turning around looking at your oh, record whatever. oh bums i get it. I, I was thinking like jazz bums yeah it's one of the greatest album covers of all time Yes, yes. Yeah, that is good. There's 60 covers. Are good. You know, it's great. The, but the British ones are better, like Aftermath, the British Aftermath. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> She's lost. I agree. You know, even oh, as... Oh, Soup is a great album cover. Man, man. I think Blacks and Blues. Good, is good. Man. That is a freaking great cover. Yeah, no, no. I'm with you on that one. God, what the hell is wrong it's weird with looking. people? Well... I just go by what I, I like that you one. Is a great that is a, that's okay, a great that's a cover. cover. I agree. That's a great. Hold cover. on, I gotta get out. I like that cover. Hang on. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just trying to tell you that the Stones did some great covers. Tattoo you looks great. Hey, it's he, Joe. Sorry, it's Joe. I, I even it like the Beggar's Banquet. The uh, yeah, just the, the you know the lettering. Good morning, Mr. Mayo. Our good friend Joe Mayo's here. Hello. Folks. Make sure you subscribe to Joe Mayo. The name is the channel. Mean Joe Mayo. He's incredible. <laughs> Joe Joe laments his mean title sometimes. He was telling us yesterday. He was thinking of changing his name, his channel name at one point. The Mercy Side Joe. Well, Mercy Side, side Mayo. Mayo. I know, I know, but I just threw the Joe in to make it's it like more a side yeah, of Mayo. Can I yeah, have a side you know, of Mayo? It's don't, too much don't of ask for a rebrand around here. You'll be, yeah, able, you'll, be you'll never get out alive ever. Yeah. You can't really do once you once you establish with somebody. That's it. You really have to yeah, keep it, done. you know. And I just wanted to pop on. I mean, I have some time for this uh, Rolling Stones event. Although, unfortunately, I have yeah. not heard the album yet, except for Angry. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's good, uh, like, and and yeah. it's nicely produced. Uh, there's, so there's a lot to commend it. It's definitely Stones in rock and roll mode, which is also very good. So, uh, Gone are kind of the any uh, uh, kind of appeals to disco or you know anything on that level. But it's gonna uh, blow you away if you like auto tune. If it you would, like auto tune, no, that album. Live in the Luckily for me, I can't like. decipher art auto tune. They always tell me Ringo's albums are auto tuned and like yada yada yada. The thing is that I hear auto tune, of course, on something like that share song, believe. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. that was ex exaggerated, you know. Yeah. But I don't hear it a lot of times, and I'm glad I don't, because if I did, I'd get annoyed, I think. <laughs> well, yeah, that was good on for share. Yeah. So anyway, Joe, are you going to get vinyl or are you going to get CD? <laughs> well, I made a little rant video about it because, you know, <laughs> I know, yesterday I go out there and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna, I, I want to get this. And it's not nothing to do with Paul on the bass. A lot of people are thinking, oh, because Paul's on the bass, you're going to get it. I'm like, I don't buy uh, solo Beatles stuff just because they appear on other albums unless they sing real yeah real. yeah yeah anyway long story short so i go to well my regular record store doesn't stock new stuff so they went off then i go to two other dependable stores and they don't have any copies left on cd but they have the vinyl and I, i'm not ready to pay 35 dollars plus tax for the vinyl yet if i really like the album on cd then i'll i'll get a vinyl but i haven't been able to find it i went to target also are you in yeah. canada no, New York. <laughs> New York. What's the, what's the what's the sales tax rate there? Is that a big concern for you? No, I'm just making it a a, a point. It's more oh, than okay. thirty five, right? Well, gotcha. It's more than thirty five, right? Yeah. I mean, definitely. it's not thirty five. It's yeah, thirty five. It's something. It's, let's call it forty. <laughs> you know, just to just to make it a uh, you know. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they want yeah, they want their, they want their nickel for it. I know uh, Channel Thirty Three and a Third Frank up here in Canada was talking about you know prices in Canada. Records, it's not unusual. Go pick one up for 60 bucks. These days. There is a, a little um, crazy. I don't know if you do you get into Manhattan at all. You don't get them, probably don't get in Manhattan. Oh, yeah, because um, go uh, to Manhattan. Arnaldo went um, apparently in Manhattan and in LA, they have a pop up store and they have all the uh, different editions and variations. And Arnaldo went in there yesterday. Uh, so McCartney 3 doesn't look so bad now compared to uh, all yeah. these uh, baseball editions. Well, that's, yeah. kind of the, that's kind of the thing for big releases. I mean, it, it's silly as it is, we can get sucked into it or not. I mean, yeah, it's a different world now than when we grow up. Who's your ball up. team, Joe? New York Mets. Oh, you're a Mets guy. All right. yeah, I'm a Yankee hater. Yeah. Well, but, uh, because you got the two, right? You got the two big, you got the match, you got the pinstripe boys, the Yankees. So I'm sorry, Joe still hasn't gotten over the Dodgers leaving. I mean, my, my local, one of my locals, Easy Street, I think they got in 50 copies maybe. And when I got there at 1030, one was left. 
Really? People want this. Did you grab it? I did. Nice. I <clears throat> well, Park bought the Mets edition of it. So there's I, another I, I suspect there. one of the record stores, I suspect, sold a lot early. That's what I think. But they, when I asked them about it, they said, well, we, no, they really screwed us. They, we, didn't just, we didn't get a lot, I, I guess. And then the other one, uh, yeah, they didn't. Other guy, independent guy, only got like four or something, you know, so four CDs. Yeah. yeah, he probably just doesn't have the the overhead to like to put down on multiple copies. You know, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of the people are struggling right now. On, in yes, the, in the business. <laughs> okay. All right, now Alex, any interest at all in this uh, Hackney Diamonds album? No, I I already came out and said that it sounds like Madonna's face looks. You know, it just sounds synthetic. <laughs> it sounds like plastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it like you got a plastic surgeon in there and made that album just awful. You know, I was pleasantly surprised. I didn't. <laughs> what a comment! I didn't expect much when I heard the second song, the one that reminds me of something out of uh, "Let It Bleed," 1969, 70, that kind mm -hmm. of soulful rock and roll gospely. With Gaga only comes in at the end. She's. It's not like on these cliche duets that bands mm -hmm. do. Oh, let's do a duet with Lady Gaga. It's not that. She comes in like Mary Clayton did on Gimme Shelter. And that's what I, I was turned around. All of a sudden, I got a little excited about yeah, it. No, I didn't. I had the exact opposite. I go, okay, I see what you're doing. All you, all you Canadian. people you don't are haters. I listen to it. It's a good album. Yeah, it's you, good. I agree it's good. It's, it's not no, great, it's, though. It, no, please. Okay, Rachel, last 10 years, name an album that is a wow. I've, I've, it's the best thing I've ever heard. A newer album, Wet Leg. You, and ten years, all, I go, I go. Jenny, here, Jenny you Lewis all sit here. Stuff. Hold on, you all oh, sit here man. every day. Beatles, Beatles, Beatles. New talk by Paul about, McCartney, twenty thirteen. You talk about you talk about albums that are 60, 50 years old, and a new album comes out that's really good, and you shit all <laughs> over it. You people are pathetic. No, no, no. I, I disagree. Yes. Yes. No, I totally disagree. Just sit back, listen to it, and enjoy it. I was driving around LA, listen to that album. Yeah, Rob, it listen, for, listen, you're a kid. You don't know what you're talking about. You're a young kid. Rachel, you're learning you're about years, records. Rachel, I get you it. Are you're all ten, excited. Rachel, you are 10 you're years old. Right? You're you know, learning about rock and Rob rock. coming in hot and yeah. saying how great this record is is going to turn your gallery off from buying it, basically. Yeah. Let, uh, you you people are silly. I mean, so it's I, the guy who talks about sixty five year old Jack. I know. Exactly. How was that exactly. Duke Ellington thing you got the other day? Like, give me a break, man. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. you don't yeah. know what the fuck you're talking Alex, about. You're, you're so like, so you're, right about you're, you're like what no, Madonna man, smells like. With some yeah. like, yeah. some like B rate Norwegian live thing of Duke Ellington. Of hey, if you ever saw the movie Slacker, you're like that Madonna's pap smear the guy carries around. I'm recovering from George Borden Friday, okay? Like, that's – otherwise, I yeah. would have put on a shirt. And... Alex, I'm glad you're covering this story now. Uh, Joe, uh, there's some. There's a young kid out there named George Borden. We love him. Uh, he had an incredible show, but apparently it's been deleted. I want to watch it. They said it went for two hours, yeah. and then he had to delete it because it was just a train wreck. What's – tell me what happened. Right, get us a Listen, story. I got up this morning at uh, 4 45 yes. um, and went to the bathroom, usually as I do in the morning. And I pulled out my phone and I saw George Borden's there. Boom. He's got Jose Moreno ran. Yes. Stunty's there. Um, and what, what, what really shocked me is that. I, what, what, are you wearing bums, a, wait, are you wearing a robe? The jazz bums thing. Yeah, he Rob, wearing a robe? I just woke up. That is that. part of the outfit. Let him be. Yeah, yeah. Hugh you you Hefner you called. He's dead. Uh, Okay, you have he wants his robe back, but keep yeah. going, Alex. This is Listen. fantastic. So let me just give you a, a play by play of, of George Borden Friday. So yeah. yesterday, I don't know what time it was, four four o'clock PST, he's on the Steve Westman show. Yeah. Takes a little break, grabs a bite to eat, comes back, hits the jazz bums hard. He probably was up there for five hours yes. out of the eight. Then he closes that down. Fires up his own stream. Like, like jealousy to me. He took I'm Jihad jealous. Friday to a whole other level. You know, like, like, I just ran with it, Rachel. So. Oh, my God. Yeah. Congratulations. Okay, I'm excited. Someone's jealous. He's not no. jealous at all. He's <laughs> reporting on the story. There's the something crazy. if you could learn about rock and roll for once. Maybe you'd be able to add something more substantial yeah, to hey, the conversation. Hey, hey, Rachel, can you tell me about a Beatles album, please? You son of a bitch. All right. Now, keep going. <laughs> keep going. Alex. 
Listen, I don't. So I just, you know, I popped in at the very end there. I didn't watch a whole ton of it, but it's just, just to see the dedication. Oh, uh, look, at the look at this! Look at this! Listen, yes. George, I'm singing your praises, no. man. George, get up here and defend nothing yourself. Nothing to be careful about. There's nothing to bro. defend. He said he's incredible. Yeah, he's George Gordon was Friday amazing. was incredible yesterday. Just yeah, incredible. All right. All right. All right. Well, obviously, you don't know the mocking. He's mocking George. He's not mocking. Yes, he's he going. He comes in hot. I even brought out. I even Joe Mayo out doesn't Axel get this. Signature Joe Mayo doesn't Mike get Stanford. this kind of drama on his streams because it's all they're all in sync with Beatles stuff. They might argue that. Oh my God, Red Rose Speedway is not as good as Wildlife or something. But it's nah. Linda, Linda should I like to get off the Beetle talk or something. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, well, I don't, want, I don't want Beetle oh, talk all the time. You got a Beetle name. You're on. You're. Yeah, even quiet. though, even though you know they're my band, you're my number one band, and my favorite. I mean, I get, to, I don't listen to the Beatles every day. I can go. Yeah. Uh, I've heard Pep. I haven't heard Sergeant Pepper since 2017. Why don't you change your name to Satanic Mayo's Request? Then, or something, <laughs> you know? Yeah, maybe well, that's a rip off of, of Pepper, but I don't need Holy that. Son. Anyway, so Alex, so so it was a two-hour stream. Then George decided to pull it. Right? Yeah. So we can't see it. What happened? What is there? I don't any, know why he pulled it. I thought was there, there was any there that I thought it was, <clears throat> You know what I think it was? I bet you it was stunty. You know, what is stunty? Push push it, you know, and Did I, I didn't see the whole thing. I think I Alex, Alex, me is, on stunty. Alex is pissed because his monthly stipend from uh, the I am so confused. I'm so the to get Mike to send the check. You know. Wait, what stipend? Like a, it's a retainer. He gets a retainer every month. I, I know what. I'm not a moron. I know what his stipend is. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what his stipend is. <clears throat> Holy son. The stream is back up for people to watch, Rachel. Well, then there's okay. no story here. Yeah. I pulled it because I was asked to. Who asked yeah, you, you know, pull the stream? I bet you it was Michael names. 45. What? Michael 45 told him to pull it, I bet. Okay, was let's Mike, find yeah. out. Michael was was 45 there. on the George Borden TV show? I think he was. I think he was. George Borden, were you able to pull 45? He was on, he was on, he was doing double duty. He did the jazz bums too. Yeah, anyway, terrible night. artwork. 45 was on jazz bums? Yeah. Doesn't this doesn't fit the Rolling oh, Stones? No. I'm going to reiterate no. that. What how oh, lazy wait, wait, is wait, this? <laughs> What a gatefold. Is, like, Whoa. I'm going to take it to the beach. Oh, Why does that need a gatefold, right? Chris, Chris again was pretty wasted again. He didn't have his. Yeah, it's, uh, well, because, yeah, we always honor if 45 wants it pulled, you got to respect yeah. the people there on the camera. Yeah. If they don't want it up, you got to pull it. Well, then, where did you hire up. that? No, they, they can right? go up. Rachel, can go Rachel, up. Su yeah. well, Sue's a producer. Did you, you know, if you've heard of central casting, right, where you cast uh, actors for parts? Yeah. Yeah. Did you yeah. cast that guy yesterday to play uh, sitting in play stunty? You know. Oh, that was my <laughs> French friend. That's Ramald. Well, I mean, you have someone who who just was polite and quiet. And yes. You had stunty it was stunty. The, if I, it was if stunty he without the baggage. I, it, it was, was stunty without the baggage. What a nice man. Right? He was nice. Uh, well, it I'm, wasn't forty-five. Was it stunty? The only other reason I pull it would be stunty. Yeah, I can't remember who else he had asked to pull a couple. It wouldn't have been Jose. Jose, he's Jose is no free way. and wild. Jose. He's crazy. Yeah. So it's got to be either forty-five or Stunty. That could be the only ones I would think. Yeah. No, there was somebody else. Who was Nick? Wasn't Nick Novice Nick there? Novice, nah. Well, yeah, he's he's not is everywhere. Now, now Alex <clears throat> is um, jealous of Novice Nick. I'm hundred percent. Yes. People that you just are jealous of. <laughs> He was in the gallery on the Stinty show. There was mutual respect. Stinty. Is there a Stunty pretender? Stinty. You know, hey, oh, Mayo, so I haven't even heard the ganger. new Ringo EP yet. I haven't even picked it up yet. It was Bizarro World Stinty. <laughs> well, is it, is it more, I'll, I'll get world. it, but is it more of the same? Yeah. Um, it, It's more... More of the same, but um, you know, I, and I'm the first one to criticize it. Like I don't want people to think I'm always kissing butt when it comes to these Beatle things, because I'll I get in trouble from fans for criticizing Paul, criticizing yeah. Ringo. You know, I uh, haven't said that this album. Uh, I listened to it quite a few times. It really, really grew on me. I really enjoy it. A lot of people think it's one of his best EPs. Okay. Um, a lot of people think it's just kind of the same. Well, it is the same old. I mean, it's Ringo we're talking about, but. I do really I'm like looking the, forward to T. Dornet doing a country thing with him. Oh, yeah, there's going to be a country one. Yeah, people have been saying Ringo should have a country album again after Buku's of Blues. They yeah, yeah, like that. Blues. 
It's supposed to be a country one. But Holy did Ringo awesome. even have an album like at this? Like I don't know. You know, I know. Yeah, I, like the the song. Why shouldn't course, people do you know? what they want to do? If yeah, you don't should he buy even it, have an album? Out. He tours every year and he sells out shows. Should he? Even I have miss an album? you. I you know his. I haven't seen his show in a while, but I saw I think four all together, four or five all together, and it's a fun show. Hey, He's yeah, smart enough to have different people do their shit. What do you got? Oh, no, he's still going to do another fucking Steely Dan video. We got there an A, B, an A, B. Okay, let's go oh, see yeah, what's yeah. going on just, with them. Nice. I just, uh, I'm just going through. Yesterday, I picked up a very clean A, B, 10, 06. So I'm this morning, very early, I'm going through. Yes. Copies. I'm going to list a couple on Discogs. I don't like those. This thing is fucking amazing. Yeah, nice. uh, he wakes up at six a.m. and pulls a Steely Dan dil dildo out and starts showing yeah. it. All oh, right, <laughs> settle it down, Norm. Love this guy. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. hold on. This is a clean, uh, well liked gentleman. Stop talking yeah. dirt. I yes, love he, him. Tim he's all talking sex today. So he's gotten horny or something. Well, I think he got upset that we were talking Beatles. And yeah, I think it's your that. hair. It's not lip and lifeless today, Rachel. Uh, oh, uh, Sue, what what did you do to help my hair? I cut your bangs. She cut my bangs. I did a, <clears throat> I did a razor cut on her bangs. She did a razor yeah, cut. What's you, called a razor did, cut, Rob? Did you find those in a record store or in a old folks' home? Where'd you find them? I was, I was, uh, I popped into one of my local record shops, and they had just picked up a collection, and there was that there, and then there was uh, a farewell to Kings, a really one of my favorite Rush albums. It was pristine. Yeah, good album. Oh, you know, nice. as, as you collect, you do you you look for upgrade copies. So you're hoarding the Dan. Tim, I, I have uh, about a year ago, Tim, maybe over a year ago now, uh, time flies. But he, uh, Tim, one of the things he uh, Tim's channel specializes in says, hey, audiophiles, you know, you don't have to pay 150 bucks for every record that you want. You can go to your store, you know, your record store, you pull out a record from the bins there for five bucks, six bucks, seven bucks. And you're going to get a very, very nice sunny record. One of the records he pulled out uh, to demonstrate that <coughs> on one episode was Asia by Steely Dan. That is a great recorded album as is. Now, having said that, there are variations in the pressings, variation in the dead wax that if you really want to look at, go into. But generally, if you get an OG Asia you're going to be laughing. It's a nicely produced. And I think the Alan Parsons albums are very similar that way. It's hard to pull a bad sounding Alan Parsons album, well, regardless of what you think about the music. One thing about Asia, though, it, it's no longer a $5 album. And uh, you want to get the Matrix AB1006. And it's it was the earlier pressing. And then there's another one. I think AB, if the B is scratched out, if it's yeah, a, a, that's a, the one I got. Yeah. What did you I, pay for that one? Last minute, they decided to raise the price on the album, as you might know, and um, they had to move to a different, Maybe that's uh, what to doing. the AA matrix. So, But the <laughs> AB1006 is highly regarded as the best sounding original. Now, it sounds like you're talking about a 1952 okay, I'll, Chevy uh, AB06 yeah. or something. It's like a car thing. <laughs> okay, what's what did you going pay for on it, there, Tim? Rob? Uh, this is a countdown clock to when Tim arrives in Los Angeles. Oh, right. Tim's heading out your way, right? Yes. I'm going to do a little record shopping trip uh, next weekend in L.A. I'll be visiting Rob and uh, some other uh, VC members. Hey, 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 make sure your yeah, wife buys... Tim, wait, Tim mate, wait. Rob, make sure your wife buys one of those Apple tags, those locator tags to put on <laughs> you. She may never find you again if Rob's driving now, you around. Hold on, hold on. There's several people who visited. Eddie is still alive. I haven't seen Dr. <laughs> Robert since he went to L.A. Well, that, that's another story. Okay. But, uh, Tim, you'll find seven copies of Asia when you're here. I'm promise. I, I'm prob I, I'm going to have a little hit list of items I'm looking for. But um, yeah. Get I'll, find I'll, first I'll, pressing I'll, Beatles I'll, UK. i talk about this. Anyway. All right. Now settle down there, Dave Pounce. Steely Dan takes a hit. Okay, I got something to present because I'm trying to figure out the mystery of Massey. Why is he so excitable today? And why he's mentioned sex a few times. I'm wondering what's going on. What are you talking and about? then I looked over at his Instagram and it's all everything fell into oh, place. No. Nice. Everything <laughs> fell into place for well, me at that point. So you know clearly uh, something. Look at the smile on your face when you do the picture. 
And you now, look, you darling man, you are blushing about three shades of red. I it mean, looked like a very romantic evening. No, I, you know, I um, beautiful. Oh, yeah. I, beautiful. The Julie scene. should have told me she was going to wear the hat yesterday because it was totally that is cool. Such, she looks so cute in it. And picture. you, Massey, look super cute in yours, too. Don't yeah. you take no for an answer. And you know what, everybody? I've had the great pleasure of meeting Norm Maslow in 3D <laughs> in real life. And he is incredibly good-looking young man, and he's still got it. And no, really, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely Seriously. true. Seriously, yeah. Seriously. Okay, now he gets a little shy looking. when we do this, Look, but he's got it. it's okay. <laughs> We've made it's him run okay. Away. We love him. Uh, <laughs> okay, and looking for the even for the excited. He's going coffee in Julie. Very exciting. No, she no, so coffee old. and She's coffee. Funny. Julie and I are not dating, so I know we're good friends. Poor Mouse, he has that's to say it every time we tease yeah, him. It is we are, well, that's that's sad, but we're uh, okay. coffee. Julie up for an award this year on the Ghosties, the inaugural Ghosties. Well, Mousy's up for an award for having coffee, yeah. Julie on, yeah, as a guest. Yeah, um, and since so we got the, Joe on camera, I'd, I'd like to nominate he, Joe for best. Not just the guest, he's the host one also gets it. But isn't he like a celebrity guest? Yeah, he's a still another fellow content creator person. Oh. <laughs> okay, sorry, but Joe. The, no. the celebrities <laughs> reserved for it, like the musician people well, that we have. Yeah, and, but well, three years ago he would have yeah. been a celebrity guest. Three years ago he would have been a huge celebrity guest. Yeah. But that you know we, we were just starting with that. What did I know? Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's so great to have Tim, University of Vinyl. So you're going to meet Rob. You guys are going to go some record store, honey. You're going to be doing, going down. Is it Safari Records, Rob? Well, no. Um, Jim, Jim will be involved, too. If, if Saturday's record hunting around L.A., and then Sunday yeah. is the Orange County Record Show. So. <clears throat> oh, okay. So Holy smokes. Now, is the, or, is, the, is the record show only records? Or are there CDs? Or are they tchotchkes? Or... It's it's pretty much all records like Funko Rob, Rob, and bobbleheads. Idea and... to hit that? Uh, I mean, that's a bit of a it's a bit of a hike to go down to Orange County. You think it'll go be? Go fun? No, on Sun. Uh, well, here uh, we're going to be able to hit the major ones on Saturday. You're going to hit it, Tim. Don't worry. Uh, on Sunday, you might not get home in time. You're going to hit on it, Sunday. Man. There's no traffic. It's like a straight shot down. Oh, there. Oh, record Alex? stores in Orange. I guess County. I got to get Alex May. I'll, I'll message Alex. Alex, I got to message him for you. Your uh, post office info, your snail mail. Like, uh, my Instagram account got hacked. And I it's can gone. see Tim. Oh, Tim uh, has Alex, reach out to me at chrysalid at shaw.ca right there. Tim has fear on his face now, Rob. Chrysalid at shaw. Well, Email wait, me like there. Many people have come to visit and sing the praises of me taking them to record. I'm a lucky charm. He will find the grails he is looking for. Are you one of those tourists? Do you like hand out a, a map of the Hollywood? No, no I'm. I, and... You know, Mazzy, I'm better Thank than you. God. You didn't even put a mint on my pillow. And are I you going to drive up to Blue Jay Way and show him around? Show him the site, the Beatles sites in L.A. I, I, I actually, I think I am going to get my own car. I'm going to do a little independent. Yeah, you better. I got to get some B-roll for some future Steely Dan videos and. Uh, anyway, what you need Evil. to do is go to Forest Lawn and, and photograph yourself by all the dead musicians. So Hollywood Forever, Johnny Ramone, you can go out there. <laughs> Johnny's there, Dee Dee's there, and you can go. Oh, I sure miss these rock. You know, there's a fog you know, like upon that. LA. Mm -hmm. What? There's rockers. You have to go to the Hollywood go to the Bowl. Whiskey. You got to go to Capitol Tower. I'm standing outside this, the this Hollywood isn't the first at the time Whiskey I've been in LA for a year. This is not the first time I've been. Oh, okay, okay. All right. I want to sing this song. You got to go, Mufo. Is it Muso and Johnny's? Muso and Frank's. Muso and Frank's. That's it. Sorry. Is Sue wearing earplugs? Sue's, oh, yeah, because yeah, I'm right next to her and I'm Are loud and I'm excitable. You know how loud she is? Yes. She's wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I'm a trained, <laughs> I'm trained uh, uh, by operatic uh, uh, training, uh, yeah, Alex, when, so I can project. When I was I, in I Vancouver, when I was in Vancouver, Sue and I had to sit at a separate table from, uh, <laughs> because she was so loud. Hey, hey Rich, I had a question, question for you. No, you know, um, after the horse I ran know. over me, I know, John. She, I know he's there, and Dee Dee's also there at Hollywood Forever. I know this shit, all right. And you know who's also there? Betty Blowtorch. Rest in peace, Betty. <laughs> what kind of name is that? Yeah, Betty Blowtorch, <laughs> Joe. Uh, we're not taking any names, but we uh, uh, but we will take a couple of prisoners. 
I'm asking, does Julie watch the Rachel show? Is she watching? Um, I again? doubt it. It's very early. She's oh, a actually, coffee yeah, chili, but, but we are an early show. She has she owns three cafes and she's not working them much anymore because she owns yeah. them. But yeah. every Saturday morning, so she's probably at one of her cafes. She does she does sling espresso at one of the cafes Saturday mornings. Wow, good for her. Yeah, um, well, she owns it. I mean, she, and, and yeah. you know. <sighs> Yeah, she's done very well for herself. Of course, coffee is one of those great <laughs> pleasures in life. Mm -hmm. And I love my coffee. Is she paying I have, I have a living wage? Okay. Yeah, well, in fact, uh, yes, Seattle yeah. now, well, Seattle happened in January, uh, has the highest mm -hmm. minimum wage in the country, starting starting at $18 an hour and um, up to 20 depending on the size. You're, if you have 500 more employees, it's 20 and then it goes <laughs> from there. There are things for smaller businesses uh, that you get protected, but you know you got to raise the prices too and stuff. So yeah, now Michael Jackson's there, but the whole thing—he's in the big uh, building up top. You can't get to him. Some celebrities are so big that even in death, they're accessing their a final resting place can be very challenging. I mean, there's a record store here. I won't name which one, but they were advertising a job at a record store for thirty-five dollars an hour. That's hmm. a lot wow. for a record store job. You know, speaking of Michael Jackson, I was just realizing today I can't really take his love song seriously anymore after I okay, saw well, now, I never, that Leaving Where Neverland. This come from? <laughs> hey, there's one there's one song I want to sing now. He's taking a Michael Jackson song. What's oh, that? really? Nick okay, it? Rob. You're out of my life. What? Are you trying to set a subtle hint towards how you're hurting him? Alex, go ahead. Why can't no, you I'm hear just saying, the, like, uh, you Michael know, Love songs? Yeah, yeah like his love's like, I can't stop loving you. Off the wall. Of you know, Paul. I'm a better letter. than Thriller off the wall hot take. Much better than Thriller. But what do you, who, who a lot is, of people say that, though. Who do you imagine him people. singing it to, Alex Dickey? Well, listen, I'll just... I'm not going to say, I'm not going to name names, but let's just, you know, go watch Leaving Neverland and I think you'll get the idea, you know. Well, the one I like is when he's in the, you know, he rock in the tree top all day long, hop banana, bop banana. That's Jackson 5, Rachel. What? Is that Jackson 5? Well, didn't Michael have something to do with the singing of it, Rob? He was a little kid when he did it. Oh, it doesn't matter. I bought, I bought that 45 when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. And I also like the ABC song. ABC. Oh, yeah, that's one, two, three. A it's a great song. That's a yeah, great that's song. Rocks and Pop. Yeah, it's my favorite Jackson 5 song. There you yeah. go, man. See, Pretty I Young Thing. That's, that's another one. I don't know. I can't listen to that anymore. Oh, well, what about the one? Of, uh, do you have trouble with the one about the mouse? Little Ben. <laughs> oh, look, Ben. What a great song. Alex Dickey, what do you, who do you think about when he sings Dirty Diana? I, oh. You know what? Here, I, did you ever see That's that interview rocker. with, with, with the Princess Diana where she asked him, she wanted him to sing that at the concert that they were at and he wouldn't do it? That would have been amazing. Imagine that. He's well, because he, he didn't want to dirty the princess. You don't yeah, dirty she the wanted, princess. She was begging for it. Yeah, well, that's she was oh, like that. Now, they that call her the good. flower of England, but quite frankly, she was a party girl yeah. in a Barbie world. Yeah, she liked the party for sure. Yeah, come on, Barbie, let's hey, go party. Speaking of partying, Rachel, I gotta. Yeah. Mean and asked this for you question for you for a long time. Do you remember um, when Michael Forty Five asked you to come party at his live stream and like run the back end for it? Yeah, do you remember that? Yeah. Yes. Does, do you still do that for him? Like when he does no, live stream, I wish are you I did. The back end? No, I. You know, but here's the deal. In those days, once upon a time, these mm -hmm. you'd get. He was getting like three thousand people or something watching his live stream when because he'd get Bernie Grumman or one of these guys right. on, and yeah. it was a time of celebrity. Where yeah. now it's like God, Kevin Gray, and everything's on everybody. Yeah. I, you could get Kevin Gray on your program. Hey, Kevin, can you come on my? Yeah, it's Alex yeah, Stake with Kevin Gray. And mm -hmm. so a little bit of the luster is worn right, well, on. Hold on, Rachel. Level. Are you yes. calling? Kevin, are you calling Kevin Gray sort of a VC or? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I wouldn't say that. He seems like a lovely fella, but I'm just saying that the, there is a greater accessibility. Once upon a time, it was quite novel to have these uh, engineers, yeah. but so now who is the key they are freely accessible for anybody with a half decent chance. Do you think that Steve yeah. Westman kind of ruined it for everybody? Like, do you just do you no. think? Like, I feel like if you go on the Westman show, it just doesn't have 
the allure it did at one point. You know, you know? Steve, next week, Steve is having a, I don't know if it's a live stream, Miles. but yeah, Miles show live stream from Miles. Abbey Road. So yeah. I don't know and if I'm going to be able to talk. talk to are, you, are you going to be on that, Mazzy? No, no. Oh, it's just if, a one -on -one. No, it's a, I think it's a one-on-one. If, you, say, if anybody's why, on why that, cut those fucking half-speed masters. They sound terrible. Yeah, and, and you, I, I, you that'd be why. rude for me to say to call. You know you why know? they sound bad? And why? You, why doesn't? Why don't the Beatles let you use the tapes? And why do you have to? You know. Oh, uh, that's I all. Why that's Everybody, bad. we've all been well, over that. I hope you know. So many questions. I think. Why do George Harrison's records sound so shitty now? No, but I think. I think. I think Sean is the best thing. Westman has said when he talks to Showalter, he goes. They just give me the tape, the thing, and I do it. Yeah. It doesn't seem like yeah. he's really involved in the political. He, Miles yeah, Joel said it's that true. he he mastered a good chunk of that last. What was it? What was the last one they did? Rubber Soul was it? A uh, revolver. 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 He said that he he mastered a good chunk of that on his laptop in his bathroom taking a shit. Now, <laughs> I don't think that's where you really should be yes. spending all of your time. You know, mastering a, a, like a top tier, top well, shelf. You know, I know who did. Out of, all the, out of all the Beatle reissues of family, I think the most consistent is is uh, Sean and those boxes. They're the same. Absolutely. They're the same physical size. They sound really yeah. good considering. And better and ba value for the money, too. Joe, was, Joe was just discussing them on his show I mean, yesterday, as a matter Joe of and I are, are, are both crazy. We both own the Uber box. But yeah. it's fun, and it's fun. But, like, really – I mean, that's kind of silly when you really think about yeah, it. Yeah, it is. But <laughs> you had to get it. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, other printed media is one thing, though, Jim. I think the whole idea of the Internet, the YouTube experience, once upon a time it was looked upon very novel, and the, it was reflected in the viewership. So if you got Michael 45 with one of these guys on, it was a worldwide event in the vinyl community, all eyes on now, not so much. Now, so what, so what what, you're and saying, that's no negative reflection on 45 in any way, shape, or form. It speaks more to the fact that people, oh, who you got? Oh, Kevin Gray? Oh, yeah, I, I just saw him over on so-and-so's channel. Yeah, he's good. You know, you got to yeah. aim high. And that's what it is. But you how does that relate to why you're not running the back end on those now? Because, because the audiences aren't so great anymore. Oh, There's a large mean. number. He can handle it. Right. He was right. overwhelmed, yeah. and he was like, and he was new to the medium. Right. So, and I go, no problem, because he knew I did this, you know. Right. Rachel, you turned out. away Tim by not talking enough about Steely Dan. How? Yeah, where did Tim go? Uh, Tim <laughs> had to go see Rob. He's got a plane to catch. I have can't buy a thrill. Yeah, that's a good that's album. That's I think that's the best I wanted to talk to Tim about War on Drugs. Are you a fan of War on Drugs, Maslow? The band? Yeah. No. I mean, <laughs> I've, I've, I've heard, heard? I haven't heard a lot. I've heard you should. Lot. You might like them, man. You I've should heard, get. I've heard them. And what it's, it's the other War on Drugs that you're a fan of, Matt? Yeah. I, I mean, I haven't taken a deep dive. I've heard yeah. one of their records. Didn't, didn't do like much it. for me. But the thing is, it's about the, uh, the the miles and the half speed mastering. I w I have no interest in that. The decision's yeah. made. We know it. It's dead and buried. But, yeah, but it's on. the artist. So the artist tonight. is the one. Oh. The artist is the one that doesn't give the tape. So he can't blame miles. He gets assignment. Yeah, he yeah. He's just that. a peg in the system. But the point is, is that what I'm more interested in is give me a date on the red and blue. What's going on with that? If you, I mean, I'm not excited about that release in any way, shape, or form. I'll get it because I'm a Beatle nut, so I'll get it. Well, but, if you care about remixes, I mean, because some of the songs that were never in stereo, they're now remixing in stereo and all that. I don't so, care. They're yeah. hearing stuff that John Lennon and George Harrison never heard while they were alive. They, we've heard the Beatles in a way... That those two Hold guys on. Never heard. John right. Lennon in '74 said uh, some fool about the the red and the blue album. Some fool tried to make it stereo and it didn't work. He didn't like the way they mixed the red and the blue, so he didn't like the mix yeah. of the red and the blue. So he he, he might have liked the new one. I don't know. Well, I, all I'm trying to say is that he never heard what we're hearing now. We're right. hearing the Beatles in a way that George and John never heard. We've heard some Beatle tunes. Why but don't those they guys never in their wildest dreams? Why don't they that. just do a one, a four, a five LP box, add some extra stuff, fill it out a little bit, and call it the purple box? Chauncey. Just, yeah. It's just not boring, Chauncey. I like Chauncey, Chauncey Phillips. Is that from is that from that guy? Uh, who's that guy who does the movie videos? Chauncey Phillips, Sean C. Phillips. I don't know if that's what that name is. Uh, yeah. From uh Joe, you know. I'm having a great time. I'm collecting the criterions. I've got a lot of oh. Warber and I'm doing nice. uh, some of the arrows. Um, Having a lot of fun, a real yeah. romance with film right now. 
I'm giving away three. If anybody uh, is lacking these films or one of them, you want them, I'll mail them to you. All you have to do is contact me. Blue Velvet, David Lynch, great movie. We've got the great escape, one of the greatest films ever made. And we, I just upgraded. I know Rob's not a fan of this, but I just upgraded this to 4K because I bought a 4K player and I've got a 4K TV so I can handle it. I'm, also getting, I'm getting rid of most of my uh, DVDs and stuff of anyone. Uh, well, I'm, DVDs I'm not interested in because I've got... Well, my, I'll, yeah, I'm a Blu-ray guy. I like the Blu-rays. Blu 4K, uh, yeah, you know, Blu -rays, and especially Criterion. Holy smokes. I'm waiting well, for 8K I, and 12K and 16K and have, all the rest of it. If you have an Oppo like me, it upgrades them. And it makes them look really good. Yeah, well, they and generally they all upgrade in general anyway. There is some yeah. upgrading that occurs. But anyway, let me know, folks, if any of those films I've shown you're interested in, uh, I'll mail them out to you. And we'll do that. You know, it's nice to spread the wealth around. Uh, yeah, because it's, uh, yeah, I know, exactly. Yeah. Rob is a blue movie kind of guy. He does blue, from what I understand. Hey, I told you that in private, Rich. You said uh -oh. you were, you said, who do you like better, Christy Canyon yes. or Marilyn Chambers? Yeah. <laughs> Marilyn Chambers. Hey, Rob, have you heard that new Michael Fremer production that just dropped yesterday? Okay, so I okay, watched his video and I commented and he responded to me. I said, can we listen to some sound clips? And he goes, not now, but maybe in the future. In the future. Here, here's my problem. <laughs> That's a with, great way to sell some audio. Yeah, here's my problem, like with Record Store Day. Right. I said the same thing to Zev and he responded. Yes, we, we go to a streaming service. We've dropped... The song, some songs from the releases. <coughs> People, if you're going to drop an album and not release any I know. Uh, audio, yeah. what's the point? I know. So Kevin, Gay, although, Kevin Gray did that with the with that. Yeah, but, thing here, he but did. Alex Dickey, the interesting thing is, and I said this yesterday, and people mm -hmm. were commenting that Robert Lovelock mastered the album that yeah. he's putting out. So. Yeah. For him to, is it, coming, you know, is it coming out next year or this year? I know it's no, digital. Uh, no, November, well, they recorded it. it digitally. I know November, so why November 2nd. It says November 2nd, it drops. Oh. Oh. Uh, here's an interesting comment. This is uh, real Jackson. There's been only one report, and I think there's been more than that, but of uh, the red and blue albums being re released. So, who really knows? Well, you're going to find over uh, out on Westman, he uh, because uh, Steve told me that um, he's been given, Miles has been given permission to speak about what's coming. So nice. the red and blue is definitely happening. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. Well, that's not being re-released. It's being reissued, remastered. Reimagined. Is it? Because it's, it's available. You can buy it now, right? Yeah. Isn't the one that's out right now all analog cut by the other guy? Well, th there was one. Well, the original is obviously. No, and then no, there but there's, one there's, a, there's a version right now you can get. There was a 2016 Hollywood. remix thing, um, or remat, or whatever. Yeah. Mm. Right. You know, it's really interesting, Joe. Your channel's been so successful. You're one of the big uh, Beatles beacons in the vinyl community and beyond. Have you ever been tempted to write a book or say, you know, I've got a following, <laughs> I've got name recognition, you know, because I mean, Joe Mail, but I mean, it's one I'd buy. You know, immediately. If I ever thought of, a, of of an idea, what to do with you know something that hasn't been done with that Beatles yeah. stuff, you know, yeah, maybe. But I tell you one thing that hasn't been done. Here's an idea: if anybody can run with it, you want to run with it is one on the Beatles channels, all the Beatles channels that have come up, how Beatles have been uh, almost uh, propelled and forwarded. And you know, it was so fascinating because Beatle Brad was on a couple of days ago. So, oh, he goes, oh. Um, my wife's playing uh, bridge with uh, Paul McCartney's wife. And then the other thing goes, Ringo reached out to me. So none of us have been able to get an actual fab on the channel. Wouldn't that knock our socks off? Because, I mean, it, yeah. it must, even <laughs> if you hate the guy, the other person has got it, uh, you'd have to go, I got to watch this. Who was thing. that again? A Beetle Brad. Oh, right, Beetle Brad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be I had him on my show the next day. And I said to him gently, you sure it was really Ringo? And he's like, oh, yeah, it's Ringo. Well, that's all I can say. So <laughs> I, had a, I, had Ringo, I had a Ringo comment. It looked like Ringo's official site Yeah, commenting on my videos. Well, and I'm like, I, Ray, I don't Ray, think Roy, it's Ringo. I have to come clean. I've been impersonating Ringo. On <laughs> yeah. Rob! Well, you know, okay, you, that's possible. You have, you, know, you, have to ask, you have to ask. You never know. I tried, yeah. and I got turned down because I 
reached out to McCartney's uh, publicist in New York. Yeah. Because, and I pitched an idea that I don't think has been done because when his photo book came out, I wanted to, I have a list because since I'm a photo agent, I know photographers and I wanted to take five of the most famous photographers and talk to them yeah. about the set, like Richard Abaddon with the psychedelic stuff. And, um, you know, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, the German Astrid Kircher. Astrid Kircher. You know, but yeah. and just say, let's talk about these five photography. Obviously, Linda, maybe, but you know, talk about photography, not what record you have. When the Beatles are going to get together again, not all yeah. that shit. But yeah, yeah, try and we, elevate it a bit. And try he said he be- wasn't doing much promo for the book interviews, but then of course I get shut down, and the week later he announces he's doing a talk with uh, Stanley Tucci who my son thinks looks like me or I look like him. Yeah. So Stanley well, you Tucci, may have been the inspiration. Stanley for Tucci that. fucked me over by getting. Well, you may have been the, the inspiration to get Tucci on board. You see, Hey, I saw this. Hey, you you got to ask. You got to ask. I've met Stanley idea. Tucci and you're no Stanley yeah, Tucci. Right. Uh, we got a question for Dave, for Joe. Uh, Joe, how is Joe from Infinity Records doing? What's his quote again? Doing well, getting treatment. That's what okay. he told me to tell people. All right. He's doing, he's well, doing yeah. is he's doing I've talked to him. He's doing well and he's getting treatment. Is right he now. like in drug rehab treatment? No. Oh. Cancer. Cancer. Okay. Cancer. Hey Joe, since you're in New York, have you ever thought about like a book that maybe like you paired like original like different Beatles pressings with like New York slices or bagels or something like that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whoa. I've thought of that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop right there. Uh-oh. What the hell did you just say? Hold on. <laughs> it's pretty good. He's, I think I like where uh, our young Alex is going. He oh, said very showing. What Listen, did you say? Rob, no initiative. It's something you could do with more of. It's called Alex, Rachel. Don't be it's called ba- you did good. Rachel bagels. That's what I Not said. Bagels. bagels. He said bagels. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to miss when I move one day in a couple of years. We're going to miss all that, that good New York stuff. Yeah, those slices are awesome. Oh, wait, here's wait, the deal. What Joe? I find is going, that Joe? when you kick one I hate to say door, where. Here's, the, here's how Florida? I might be stuck in Delaware, maybe. Delaware? Oh, well, no Read between tax. the lines with that, too. Oh, no sales no. tax, Joe. <laughs> well, no life either. No, hell, wait, wait, wait one second. If eat the, Go to the shore. Anywhere near the shore in Delaware is awesome. Go on they the say. Beach. All Watch right. out for that. Go traffic. On the beach. This is a man who lives in Muscle Beach. He knows beaches. Well, no, no. I I told you, Rachel, yes. we toured where I used to live in Ocean City, Maryland, which is yes. directly south of yes. the beaches of, of Delaware. Delaware near the shore is great. Okay. Now, here's the deal is that I'm, my feeling about celebrities and getting on your TV show, once you kick the door in a couple and somebody goes, you had so and so on. One leads to another, yeah, leads to course. another, leads to another. So the guys, I watch this because I guitar, uh, the pedal show, that pedal show, they had Dave Gregory XTC on, then they had Noel Gallagher on, and then yesterday they had Johnny Marr from uh, Smith's on because Johnny's got a new book on his guitars, and so he wanted to pedal it, pardon the bun, and so he went on the, that pedal show, and they went over to his studio because they're in England, and they were able to sit down and talk to the guy. It was fantastic. Cool. And clearly when they reached out to him and said, well, we've got a fairly large following, 300,000 people follow us sort of thing. And we've interviewed Noel Gallagher, who he knows intimately. You know, Johnny knows uh, uh, Noel Gallagher quite well. And then, of course, Dave Gregory, who he respects a great deal, Gregory being on there. So that's an example of a channel that really did it. You have to get to their publicists and stuff, you know. Yeah, but also you have to. But once the publicist learns that you've already interviewed some named people, yeah, but, absolutely. You know, yeah, I I don't know. I think like the professor of rock seems to get everybody. Hey, we're sitting down with fill in the blank. He, it takes this is yeah. what he does. His show is really about that. It's a great program he's got, uh, and he's got Zenny eyewear. Rob, of course, you're a Zenny eyewear man yourself. You swear by the company. People, it's so funny because uh, I've never done, I've done a handful of not, I mean, yeah. just some mastering people and that kind of like Joe Harley and Kevin Gray, but you know, they don't get as many views as doing some silly whack-a-mole kind of shit. It's funny. You know, people like those better. Julian Lennon, you could get on, but the problem with Julian is that you'll have no Beatles talk. If you get Julian, he'll talk about photography. Did you like see her? that pathetic review? With I'm sorry, folks, that other guy with Bill Maher. What a joke that was. He talks more about him. I guess this, that's his style. Talks more about himself than what anything did he do? Else. Who did he interview? Oh, well, Julian. 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 Oh, Julian. Bill Maher had Julian on. 
Yeah. I'd leave Julian Julian alone as regards anything Beatle related. Anything John related, I wouldn't talk to him about it. I no. Just, like Kevin Nealon had a nice little walk with him. Kevin Nealon, the comedian, he's got a little walk and talk with celebrities. Thing. You know, they, they go into the Hollywood Hills for a little. I tried. Time, I even and he tried. And Julian there, and it was great. Go ahead. When man. All Things Must Pass came out, and uh, what was it? Imagine. when What was the last one? Imagine, I guess. I tried to get on, and it was a long shot, but tried to get Sean and Danny to because I wanted to see the different processes how they how they yeah. go out go look at their father's uh, archives, and you know even if they don't have any specific things, that would be really interesting how they each because they each do it very differently. Yeah, yeah. well, course you've got to have and it's scheduling, friends. and and plus, I mean, the size of the channel, even at thirty thousand. I would big. argue that it's not enough. You're small potato. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But that yeah. helps, you know. But you know, it's small, but it's a targeted small, you know. Jesus, Craig, <laughs> tell us what you really think. Scathing, a scathing, a review. scathing review. <laughs> Holy smokes! Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I would rather have Sean do an interview. Uh, he's an intelligent. I think it's going to go on to Sean. Sean's, say, I Sean's like brilliant. Sean. I love Sean. Yeah, um, I like Sean. I find Sean a more interesting personality than Julian. I think Julian's more uh, more uh, by the book, and I yeah. think uh, Sean's a little bit more outside the book. And he, I follow him on uh, Twitter, X, right? And Julian, I mean, uh, Sean is Sean. just a fascinating guy. He's he's uh, he's very he'll he'll engage in different things. I'm always watching. Oh, there's a conversation going on. And Sean's in there, part of it. He's a, he's got an inquisitive, naturally inquisitive uh, orientation intellectually. I, I uh, have a great deal of respect for the young man, and he's not that young anymore. That's the crazy yeah, thing. Yeah, you know, that's isn't the crazy. He, isn't thing. he fifty? He's forty-eight. He was born in seventy-five. Right? So he's forty-eight. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Rachel, I got to run. Okay, uh, Alex, please email me. I need yeah. to uh, get your address ASAP. Okay, and, uh, and then I'll talk to you about what's what and everything. All right. See you later. Thank you. Uh, Cheers. Okay, you had a strong showing today. Wax, please go a little easier on Alex. This kid's becoming a star in his own right. You've had a rough go of things. Yeah, if you can go right. easier Rachel. on the rising <laughs> stars on, in the viral Rachel. community, Rachel. Yeah. I wish you defended me like you do, Alex Vicky. I well, feel, I knew. I feel Rob, like I'm the son you just don't like, Rachel. Rob, <laughs> listen. You are the one. Listen, I knew you're a star. I'm pretty sure you spend half your life <laughs> sticking up for Rob. I do. I defend Rob to the bone. I tell you, these bastards to try and get him down. But he's Rob. Your game. You're wonderful. Right, right, but you're breaking yeah. out into your own. Alex, he right. has nowhere to go. Right, Rachel. You know like why not the dog? Job, and I have no hope. Rachel, you know when the yeah. dog makes a mistake on the carpet, you kind of yeah. treat me like that. You rub my nose and I, 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 I would. Paper. No, I couldn't find it. I I don't know him, so I couldn't figure him out right away where he was going. It's cool. comedy. He does comedy. That's what he. That's where he goes, Joe. Uh, he's Joe, acting. Uh, yeah, he's hey, an actor. Yeah. Hey, oh. Joe, Joe, you live in New York. You see a lot of guys walking around in their robes. How do you treat them? <laughs> walking around in their robes. I don't oh, think God. I ever have seen anybody in their robes. Oh my around. God! We uh, got a one day on our Patreon. We'll talk about our paper roots. Oh, yeah, we've done the paper route thing. Yeah. Okay, now hold on. <laughs> Let's take a look here. Okay, we got oh, Sean. There you go. Okay. Now, when did this happen for an autograph uh, session? This was about 11, 12 years ago. This is uh, the Ghost and the Sabretooth Tiger. Yeah. And they mm -hmm. played the Great American Music Hall in San Francisco. Yeah. And Bob Weir showed up from the Grateful Dead and played a couple songs with them. Oh, wow. That's, that's his girlfriend, Charlotte. Yeah, beautiful lady. And uh, that was that first record they did, the EP, I guess, or the yeah. One. So I have a sign. Uh, yeah, I like Sean a lot, and he's he speaks very honestly th about things. He speaks honestly about his Japanese culture. You know, he was he was born in a rice paddy. A lot of people don't know that. Oh no. And, uh, yeah. and he's got the whole connection with his dad, and the English side. So he talks about being, you know, kind of of two cultures in this great world of ours. Uh, do you like Ghost of a Saber Tooth Tiger, uh, Joe? You know, my nephew brought it over. Well, he brought a bunch of albums over years ago, and that was one of them. And he played me one track. I don't remember what it was, and it was very good because he knows what I like. 
And he said, I think you'll like this one. And he played that track. Whatever it was, I can't remember as many years ago. It's and I record. said that. It's a good record. Yeah. So. Yeah. I wish he would continue to do more things like with that or the thing he did with, you know, the uh, Claypool, Lennon, Delirium. Yeah. Well, they've done Consider- a couple of albums now, right? Considering these guys are so young, they hardly put any records out, you know? Yeah, that is something, really. I mean, they're I mean, working too. That's why it's too. Are they working too much on their father's archives? And what are they, you know? I think he's just really starting to get into that, right? I mean, it's now, it's not Yoko anymore, really, that's doing right, anything. Right. You know, so but he's doing it. Sean. Again, uh, Sean's doing a great job on those, you know? Well, I love, like, you know, I, I had done a, a review of the Give Me Some Truth compilation, John Lennon. And he actually liked what I did because I was like saying things I didn't like, things I did. So he actually contacted me, which I was, you know, so yeah, yeah, happy with that. And uh, you know, I didn't like. He took all the horns off uh, uh, steel and glass on that, and I'm like, well, I didn't like that. But uh, I think it's just for that one release. He wanted it to sound a little. You know what different. actually sounded good on that? It was it is it Attica or Angel? Which is Angela? Angela. The one from because it made yes. it a better song. That's yeah, why I, was, I agree. Yeah, I mean, I don't like the band on of of uh, Rachel and I talk about. We both dislike Elephant's, Elephant's Memory Band. I, I like them on that record. Believe it or not, I like the sound of the on the record. I don't like when I've heard them live. I'd yeah. pull them off, man, Joe. I'd pull those guys off the record right away. <laughs> Yeah. Because I because you know for me why Joe is because Lennon's music is timeless. One of the great the genius of the Beatles, the music really is timeless, and that's why people cover it to this very day and it's successful. These guys are on a whole different level. But when you put the Elephant's Memory sound on there, I think it dates it pretty badly to a time and place. Well, that whole album, I mean, that's dated because of the topics even that yeah, they sing true. about. It. That's true. You know. Yeah, it's true. It's more of a historic artifact than than anything that's transcendent or, or that speaks beyond its uh, time. And, and I'm really disappointed because Sean at one point had said, somebody asked, when are we going to see sometime in New York City a, a box version of that, a deluxe set? He said 2022, and then, of course, they skipped over it. Now they're going to be doing mind games instead for, yeah. for next year. And and everybody thinks it's because of the, you know, woman is the bleep. Of oh, the yeah, world. yeah, yeah. You know, I, I just think commercially they want to, you know, Mind Games is going to sell more theoretically than, I mean, your. But seven. still, you got to, you know, you want to cover everything. I, you know, I always, yeah. I always say when I see some of the stuff that comes out on like box sets, you think, well, is this going to sell a lot? Is that going to sell a lot? Yeah. I always think, I mean, I can't think, like, like they have, they'll have like a Turtles box set or a Trogs. No, if, no disrespect to them, but with the Turtles or the Trogs. Box set really sell more than you know, those, John all Lennon. these like things from those bands. These things don't sell. They'll sell maybe a thousand copies, three thousand copies. They're not sell. I mean, Beatles are different, but the they Beatles still don't sell different. massive numbers. They're not doing massive pressings. Yeah, they can't expect you know, mass massive numbers. You know, they really they yeah. shouldn't expect it. I don't know if it has anything to do with that because so they put everything out anyway. I mean, I'm just trying to think like uh, Bobby Gentry. Like, I mean, I like, I love Ode to Billy Joe and uh, a couple of other songs, Mississippi Delta. Uh, fancy. Joe, if you were, if you could only get one, what would you recommend for the Give Me Some Truth remix? I never bought it, but if I go for it, should I go for vinyl or should I go for CD? What is the better? Jeez, deal? I can't remember. I have both, but it's been uh, several years now. I can't remember what's what on there. Yeah, which um, one, Rachel? Which one? So it's the Give Me Some Truth Greatest Hits package they did. It's uh, the remixes. Uh, I think for and, you, the CD box would be fine. I mean, yeah, the we, CD had it has more. Does it have more stuff? Or is it some stuff missing off the vinyl? You know, I don't maybe even remember. A couple I, of tracks. I, I remember missing. 50 years ago, Joe, but I don't remember four years ago. That's me. I can't yeah. remember four That's minutes, but I can them. remember 60 years ago or 50 years ago. You know, like in some cases, the CD is actually, like I've got this Lou Reed box set with uh, the records, but the CD is really the way to go with that. It's just got more content. You know, a, right? a you big revelation was when, when uh, the Plastic Ono Band CD box came out, that square box. Yeah. Hearing those, not just the element mixes, but the thing, I realized how great... I mean, I know how great they were, but more, even more how well, better great. I'm not speaking English here, but Klaus Vermin and Ringo are to that sound of that record. And mm-hmm. and Ringo is just so tight and so spot on time wise. 
and the bass on that that's a really good sounding record i really I like i think it. so yeah and, and it's it's minimal but minimalist yeah. but it, it works it's not overproduced it's un, you know well I mean, one of the great things about len as an artist is that you can strip everything down on his stuff and it's amazing i was right? listening in the car so and, much uh, depth with the guy i was listening in the car walls and bridges came on in uh, uh number nine dream and as much as i like it with all that lush orchestration and those singers I'd like to see the drummer, the drumming loud, and some of that orchestration brought down. I mean, but that's just as personal. Yeah, I, I, well, I mean, I like the I like the orchestration. A lot of people don't like, you know, horns on stuff, and sax, you know, on there, uh, rock stuff. I like them, but um, I'm wondering what they're going to do when you get to the Walls and Bridges release. Yeah. You know, are they going to? I'm sure Sean's going to do something with some of that, fix it up. It's yeah, that would be interesting. The other interesting thing when you talk about orchestration, like, you know, we always hear about how Paul absolutely abhorred all the orchestration horns and everything on Long and Winding Road. And yet when they're actually talking about that song in the Get Back uh, movie, yeah, uh, Paul going, hey, Paul, are you going to put string signals? Well, we haven't decided yet. You know, we might. Yeah, you it know, sounded like so maybe he wasn't against. Go. He wasn't yeah, so he just against. Didn't like Phil he wasn't so doing it without. Then, was he? he didn't like Phil doing yeah. it without him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more of an ego play, I think, than any artistic. Uh, and, and I love the Spectre version. Artistic. I'm sorry. I, I think Spectre. I think he did a great job. I mean, he became a number one hit. You know. Uh, well, Joe, not only that, but do you think about you know when you think about the Beatles catalog, George Martin, George Martin, George Martin, George Martin, Glenn Johns. And then, and then Phil Spector. So you go through three producers on this yeah. final you know, album. The Glenn Johns Get Back album is not very good, really. It's I horrible. Agree. I agree. Yeah, a lot of people say, though, that's the one I, mean, I like. No, no. Listen to as it's a horrible. And the wise. Beatles were right not to release it because they right. knew it's yeah. it, it it wasn't the one. No and what the, the takes what were all, but that was the idea, I guess, that they were like not really finalized. They were all like. I think it was just a production horrible. order of songs or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, we got the stone. I got my stone shirt on. We were talking earlier about Hackney uh, uh, Diamonds. The Wax Figures is great. Oh, he doesn't know stones like I do. Uh, he wasn't there in 65. Uh, I was. I can tell you this, that uh, it's a good album. To me, it's not a great album because it's, uh, in my mind, it's derivative. They're going over well-tread ground. They aren't doing anything new. They always had a to their strength. Yeah. So it's good for that. It's great. It's good, but it's not... It's not up there with their great work. Well, that's so, because yeah. you only heard it once streaming. You can't tell there. Well, no, I can tell this the what they're trying to do. I go, okay, I get this. I know what this is about. Yeah, I wanted to do a review really bad yesterday on my channel when it came out, but I, I say I couldn't get the physical product. Now I could have listened like Rachel did. I mean, I could have listened on YouTube or somewhere, but I, I want to. I, I don't know. I want to wait till I actually get the physical thing. Our, Rachel yeah. Arnaldo, I haven't watched it yet, but I saw Arnaldo drop right. the version. Yeah, there they are. Ronaldo went to the pop up. He dropped a video this morning. I haven't watched it yet. I'll watch it later. But he probably, I don't know if he was reviewing the record, but he's, it's about the record and the variations. Yeah. I certainly agree with your review of the cover and the artwork, Mavs. Yeah. I think it's okay, but it's not very stones it like at the end of the, the stones. day. It's, it's kind of cheesy for the stones. I don't know. It's highly produced, but I think given the age of the, uh, you know, the players, I think maybe it needed to be on some yeah, You level. know, I don't think it's overproduced personally. No, it I mean, it does have a little bit of a modern sheen, but all the, the the good thing is all the musicians were playing live in the studio. It's not one of these things that, you know, someone's playing here and they they send the tapes and the bass is added and the, they're playing live. Like Paul was live in that one track that he's on. They're all playing live in the studio. The only thing that was different is when Bill Wyman was added to the track with Charlie Watts. You know, that which, was which added, song. But, which song is that? Um, I forgot which song. Bite. Well, well, the Bacardi ones bite your head off or something yeah. like that. I, bite my I head think off. the album bite is my excellent. head off. I think the album's excellent. So that's my yeah. Opinion. It's um, let's see. There's a hold on. I don't know. Have you heard of a little song called Gimme Shelter, Rob? You should listen to that. Yeah, I, I, Rachel, the stabby might happen soon if you keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah, right, that was going to say, I saw that photo today. That's that's a great photo. All right. Yeah, there you go. Holy crap, huh? Yeah, that is really good. Now, I'm not usually one for super group, group things, but it would have been cool if, if Paul and Ringo and those were, were jamming and, and see if it turned in anything, all five of them. And you know? I think I'm the only one on here who's actually met Nick Mick. 
So I met Mick. So oh, this is something you should get, Rachel. You, Rachel, this is something you should get. Yes, let's take a look. Oh, okay. So we yeah, saw that. I saw that yesterday. I was tempted to get it, but it was a price tag, and Sue looked at me. It's a double record. That, I don't know. Can I get it, Sue? Today? Can oh, I wait, go and buy it? Mazzy, there's. Isn't okay, there I'm going to buy it today, Mazzy. I'm going back there, today and get it. Isn't there a five disc LP version coming out? I thought. I don't know. Yeah, I think they're that's directly through the site, a Rhino or whatever. Um, they're do, they're doing a signing at Amoeba at the end of the month. Yeah. Um, well, this, I can't be there, Rob. Thank you for meeting Mick and. Uh, Good. Oh, I'm going to Amoeba and just hang out with Paul. Fuck off, Rob. That's her fault. Hey, listen, Rachel. It's not yeah. my fault that um people enjoy me more than you. Yes, and it's the jealousy is starting to come to a boiling point. Rob. Yeah, your hair starting to look limp and life. It's I'm going limp. Oh, here, come uh, limp, go quickly. He's getting good. me. You, okay. know, you know what you just did, sir? What? You, oh. ju you judged. She won't look, so you know. Dave Pounds is saying it's just the cover. The music is important. Yeah, I, I so agree disagree with that. With that. I, I, now, the music's a, if, if a gun's put to my head, I'll take the music. But I do like the whole package. Yeah, you, you, know, you have like to have a, a good, you know, a really good oh, black Mazzy, mark. Mazzy, stop, stop right there. You're the one whose catchphrase is it's about the music. Oh, that's is. right. It's all about the music. Of Dummies or something is. like that. But but you want a good package for that music. I agree. Yeah, the music is. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's wrong with liking everything together. You know, yeah, sure. If, if I, you ask me, take a choice. Do you want the music or the packaging? I'll take the music. But do I, why do I got to choose? You know. That is horrible comments, Steve. We don't wish to rob Susan. She always takes Rob's side against me anyway. <laughs> yeah. And listen, oh, Schnee. Yeah, Steven. It's not my fault that the ski lodge has been red tagged. Okay, hold that. Now don't don't make my uh my uh voiceover guy uh, <laughs> upset. Steven, yeah. I need you for my voiceover with the Hollywood music and everything that we're using. Yeah, Steven, that smooth right. voice of Schnee. Can you please email us? Yeah, Steven. Email me, Steven, so that we can uh Start talking about uh, doing a yeah. bit for the, the Ghost Piece Awards. It's troubling that when he does his CD junkie videos, he starts off going, I'm sorry about the CDs. <laughs> you shouldn't start off your videos that way. Yeah, Steel Wheels was a good album. It wasn't a great album. That's the last one I bought, honestly. I know I know the Blue and Lonesome was supposed to be good, but it wasn't yeah. their, them. Well, the song. last thing they did is they dropped that one song like uh, four years ago or something. Go ahead, Frank. What's your question? Let us know. Uh, anyway, so the thing is, yeah, Steel Wheels, I saw that concert. It was a lot of fun. The Stones were amazing. And, of course, Bill Wyman was still with the band. So you really saw the Ronnie Wood uh, iteration of the band. You know, you, you do know. hear a difference on the two tracks that Charlie's on. I mean, uh, Steve was it Steve Jordan? Is that the drummer? Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's great. But the Stones with Charlie... Or, or something else. Well, the know? Stones with Charlie are the Stones, yeah, right? Yeah. Steve Jordan was like the original drummer in the David Letterman band. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. I mean, well, it, and it, also he grew up with Scotty. It's not that he's. I mean, he's a great drummer. It's just that it's kind of like the Beatles with Ringo. If they had another dr a drummer, it would just been a different thing. And it wouldn't be the Beatles, real. I mean, it's no. funny. You know, it's funny how that is. I, okay. Yeah. Are you going to do a video, Rob Walker? Yep. He's been around since 2010. Okay. Has he got a wrench? Okay, hang on there, uh, MJP. We got to give you a wrench there, buddy. Yeah, we we are not going to vet you whatsoever. So when you I, turn now, it off, Rob, don't. Why are you so hurt by the newcomers? Yeah, Frank you wants no way. Frank are wants no way. Can't MJP? find uh, the DVD yeah, we, in the store. Well, actually, Rob, we do need a new line of questioning. Okay. Oh boy! Yeah, we're not through giving these kids three degree. I give the Stones' new album seventy eight percent. I much prefer the slower tracks better than I expected. The album cover is crap. You know. I don't. I think that's a fair assessment. It's like a that's seventy five to eighty is percent would be okay. a good. By the way, MJP just passed the mustard. He agrees with me. It's. I love the new album. Such a nice gift to us all. There's MJP. I like. I think it's a good album. It's a rock album. It's good. But you know, it, again, I, I like. I, I've watched a lot of people raving, like these young people that don't know as much about music as me and Maz. Well, let me and they're you. getting all excited, and they're going, "Oh, it's all great and fantastic!" Well, I, don't I, think it's, I don't think it's now, fantastic. Hey, I just think it's you. Hey, again, being the youngest person here, I have a question for all of you. All right, go ahead, there, young. Are you 40, 40, 40 yes, years? He is. He's a 40 years child. ago. 
40 years ago, tell me any 80-year-old entertainer you were, like, watching or listening to. Oh, no. George Burns immediately. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Especially when he did Fantastic. little help for my friends. Leslie Nielsen. I yeah. don't know. Well, let, he well, he, he only looked dead. 80, Joe. He Leonard was not Cohen. No, he wasn't that old. Leonard Rich Cohen. Little. Yeah, Rich Little. Rich Little. Rich little. But he, Rich, was, he was young. Rich then. Little is like 85 now. He yeah, wasn't I, I know. Rich You're Little right. always sounds like Rich Little as far as I'm No, concerned. George yeah, Burns yeah, was hey, the elder. Joe. Wilfred Brimley. has been elderly forever. I travel either. I mean, uh, Rob only goes to old people shows. You went to see Charles Lloyd yeah. recently, and yeah. uh, well, you know, because I want to see him before they end up in the me looking for the records. But that, but I still think these guys, for me, are an inspiration as far as these guys that are older. You know, you you, you can still have a life. You know, if you if you stay healthy in your eighties, you know, you well, mean yeah. the, late quality of, the quality of the life for people that are eighty are a lot different than like. 20 years ago. Well, obviously, years. it really helps when you're 80 years old and you have someone cooking you healthy food every day. And to have a little of this, maybe. Exactly. Exactly. Now, the stones are great, but this. Hey, Rob, you know I'm a Beatle. I'll man. talk back to that anyway. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. Look, let me tell you something. There's nothing to defend when it comes to the Beatles. The Beatles require no defending. I love the Stones, but you know what? They're, to me, they're always going to be, and like it or not, it's the Stones that, that get defensive. They're always going to be the Beatles' baby brothers, Yeah, the way I look at it. Just like yeah. the Mets are to the yes. Yankees. Yes. And I'm a Mets fan, but the Yankees are it, and the Mets are always – the little baby brother. Or the sucky Dodgers to the great <laughs> Giants. Yes. The Stones haven't accomplished in 60 or so years what the Beatles did in seven. Yeah, well, they, and they, yeah, exactly right. They have. But I loved them. I like, I, I'm a Stones fan. Yeah. Yeah, I love the Stones too. Where Mazzy does. Too. I always say this. Okay, really quick. Anybody on the panel, or of course, anyone, you can Google it. Name three songs. Out off of Steel Wheel right now, or Bigger Bang right now. You can't. Well, bigger uh -oh. Bang, I haven't heard, but Steel Wheels, I can name two. <laughs> what was Mixed Emotions? Start on? me up. Start mixed Emotions, up. almost heard you. Almost heard yeah, you. Mixed Emotions is on. You can't name. I mean, obviously there are exceptions. Someone's going to be, but you just don't know their songs. Yeah. Liverpool is not a shithole, man. My my uh, grand. You're a shithole. My grandfather's from there. Yeah, come on now, bro. Be nice to the fans. Yeah, the Dodgers, but what's great about <laughs> no, the Dodgers, they, they choke in the end. The Do if the Giants have a bad year, they're they just have a bad year. But you know, 2010, 2012, 2014. Yeah, you can, Greg, if you want to do so many, you're more than welcome to join us. Uh, Sue, so can you uh, pull up the Marvin? Marvin's wanting. A, the Dodgers have the highest. Now. Payroll Marvin, we're going to play your song now. Either them or the Yankees. I yeah, I, I think so you go. So you've got it up there. So you go present. So I hit present. Yeah, hit present. Go. Uh, uh, Chavez uh, Ravine. Air screen. Okay. Click. Then go. Uh, I went to a Dodger game this year and I spent like then. 70 bucks. It's just a different. Go, every, I think it's again. everywhere now. It's not just. Go Dodger. share screen. I didn't watch watch okay. or go to. Now you'll, you'll go to a single Mets game. Whatever. <laughs> well, what's it say? No, Miss MJP YouTube. Okay, well, do that. She does that. Look how she goes from no, that's us. That's, that's, that's him. Yeah. That's creepy, Rachel. No, no, it is. It's extra creepy. So that's, that's like me. Rachel oh. going through a time warp. I know. Yeah, I know. Go grab the top one. Click yeah. on it. Open right. it. That's just, oh, is that okay? Hey, so you got to go back so, and yeah. get Marvin. So don't cut the green wire. Mar Marvin, I'll do it. Marvin, give me a link to your video again. I'll do it. I'll do it. Marvin, just drop a link and I'll do it because. It's the, the connection's good today, everybody. Yeah, it seems actually, we may have be, solved actually, it. Actually, it's a good way to test Maybe it. I think Emotional yeah. Rescue, yeah, that album, uh, was a good Stones album. I love that. I love that song. I yeah. just, I'll be I love your it. savior, so steadfast and true. Do, 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 I have that. You know, That's I have it. a lot of Stones albums, but they don't sound good. Drop the link. Is it fair to say maybe what Mazzy was getting at is that, I mean, it's not, you know, song for song on every album. It, it, you know, there's it, something you can pick out of the albums, but not all of them are solid all the way. Is that fair? Exactly, yeah. And I find that a lot of those albums that I kept buying them at a habit. I So I have every Stones album. Yeah. And I hardly played them at the time, maybe. But now if I put on, like, some, one of those, what I don't remember the names of them now. I enjoy it more now. 
because it sounds like a it sounds like the Stones. And Rachel says she doesn't like. They always sound like the Stones. They have a sound. Yeah, they I know. Hear. I get that. That part I get. I don't have a problem with yeah. that. I don't they're have kind a of, problem. They're with kind that. of a sloppy band in a good way. Does that make sense? You know, but here's the deal, Mazzy. I gotta, yeah. I gotta address this. This is like these song, these groups, like the Royal Guardsmen. They could only do dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun. So every song they do, dun, dun, right. dun, dun, dun. Yeah, they but, got that thing. Okay, so we sound like them, thing. but there's no yeah. creativity. Yeah, but Ray, the thing with, hold on there, Ringo. The thing with the Stones <laughs> is they could do "Bite Your Lip, Baby." If you "Bite Your Lip, Baby," I love that could, opening. They could do that, but then they could also they could also do uh, my sweet lady Jane. So those guys had so much versatility. Get off of my cloud, mother's little helper. So much versatility in the band. No song they have a sound, but no song sounds like the song. Oh, that's just a re a revamping of this old chestnut, you know. And that's what they do with this new album. Frankly, with uh, the Gaga thing is, oh, I go right away. Oh yeah, I see. They're trying to do uh, yeah, black Jimmy and blue. Shelter part two. I wrote it this morning in the gallery. Black and blue is the best sounding Rolling Stones record. It's, it's well, yeah, really, but that's when Ronnie Billy Wood Preston on that record is piano playing on like melody is so good. All right, folks, bear with us. We got uh, a new hit song coming out from Marvin Koshowitz. No more talk. He's political. He's powerful. He's Marvin. Here we go. No more talking. No more talking today. No more falling, no more falling away. No more feeling, no more feeling you say. No more talking, you're just falling away. No more wanting, no more wanting to stay. Tranchy. No more loving, yes, it's all gone away. No more talking, thinking today. Am I hiding you to the tide of you? Some place that you think that I am far from you. No more talking, no more talking today. No more talking, you're just falling away. All right, very good. I nice. think that was one of Marvin's strongest. Go ahead, Rob. Oh, well, I was taking my earplugs out, Rachel. <laughs> Rob, stop it! Don't hurt. <laughs> that was Those a good effort, guys. Marvin. Elliot, did you like the latest Marvin hit? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I always like what Marvin offers. 
right. Come on up, uh, Craig. If you want to do a soul minute, you're welcome to join us and uh, bring some <clears throat> records with you and do the thing. That was good. I would see, uh, I heard, I could see an orchestra going on there nicely. Just yeah. Crescendoing yeah, was, in there. To, to fill it out. Yeah, fill more, that thing yeah. out. I think you should do some more work on that song, Marvin. That could have been something Blondie did. I mean. I like the intro. Uh, it was yeah. really good. Hey, it's no Hackney Diamonds. It's no uh, Hackney uh, Diamonds yet. Well, that may be a good thing. Elliot, you were on yesterday, the day before. You weren't excited about this thing at all. But I, I almost thought you were being too dismissive, Elliot. Like, well, I think it's a good album. I don't think it's great, but I think it's a good album. It's worth yeah, buying. But we it. have, we buy have, it. but most of us have limited resources. So are you, are you better off? And, and it's a judgment, obviously. Are you better off buying yet another Rolling Stones album? Or are you better off discovering a new artist or supporting an independent artist that's struggling, trying to sell records uh, and make a living? These guys are multi-millionaires. They're multi-probably billion. Who knows how much money they've got. Don't ask me. Because people who watch my channel know how I feel. <laughs> and, and they're and, and we've got so many, so many musicians out there that are can't even squeak out a living. Yeah. So support your support your independent artists, support your up and comers, support your local artists. If you got plenty of disposable income, sure buy that Rolling Stones album if you like it. Yeah. Or if you want it. That, but that's totally fair, Elliot. Resources. That's uh, Elliot, that's fair. But look at all the people they employ, the record companies and the and the tours and the artists and the to make that record, to sell that record. A lot of people are being employed by people like the Stones. I, I don't dismiss that. I, I understand that. And if you're a huge Rolling Stones fan, I can see going out and buying it, but I think it also, you know, Elliot, for me personally, is on the psychological level, a little bit about being part of the Stones fan base because I've followed them for a long time. And it's just kind of nice to be part. And contemporary, here's the Stones' latest. Hey, I went out and bought it. It make, it brings me into connection with the band. Elliot, I, I can understand. Elliot, that. that's just my my viewpoint. Yeah. Is just Elliot, that like, a legitimate point. I, Elliot, like Taylor Swift today, Stones, yeah. Taylor Swift, bring people into record stores, reminds people about music again. So yeah. they might go in for a Stones record and think, maybe I don't want that. Maybe I'll get the new whatever. You know, they'll go into a record store. Like Mayo went into his store and they didn't have any copies. I don't. Did you buy anything else, Mayo? Um, did I? No. <laughs> but I, you know, you ask her the wrong, in my case, I'm all about the past, you know, yeah. and stuff. I don't but care about the old. Stuff. You didn't buy anything old. And I'm not going to, you know, no offense, but I think if I had a lot of expo uh, uh, extra income, uh, disposable income, yeah. I'm probably then more likely to support right, other people. Right, right. If I right. only have a, a little amount of income, I'm just interested in what, you know, I want to hear i don't care about if, if they're making money or not you know that that doesn't well, interest me you but know? you and i are addicted and we buy the ringo albums and all these beatles stuff even though it's not all great yeah oh, no, i well, just a completist yeah me, exactly that, we're, and we're addicted I, it's like an addiction like, here's, oh, yeah. a better, here's a better way to look at it they're gonna press so many copies of this record that within a month you'll be able to get it for of like course and then it'll be discounted yeah yeah it'll be discounted yeah okay ali go ahead uh, I heard a songwriter uh, speaking uh, recently about uh, about the state of the music industry uh, and how difficult it is to make a living as a songwriter. And, and, and I, I think his point was very, very interesting. As he talked about how it uh, these big artists, these legacy artists, and these big, huge artists help pay for a lot by employment and, you know, uh, things along the, the, uh, recid uh, the sidelines of it. Uh, he, he said he had three friends that uh, song fellow songwriters that had co-writes with Taylor Swift on her latest album. Now think about how many records and how many streaming hits, how, how much Taylor Swift's latest album sold. They each made, the, and they, as I said, they were co-writers on, on songs on that most recent album by Taylor Swift. They each made about nine hundred dollars so far. Nine hundred dollars is all they've made. I don't believe that. that. Actually, well, 
if they're if they're added uh, unless their publishing was bought out they get a share of the public no, they're they're they were co-writers so I'm they're sure on they the didn't. label they're going to get some major bucks i don't know i don't know well i mean that would have been a quarterly payment but now we're talking about think about how much taylor swift sells i know that's what i'm saying if, if they but got if they're even, an equal writer it but most of it is from streaming correct downloads and streaming almost all of it is she's only i mean she, in today's world she's selling a lot of lps but even to in today's world a lot of lps is nothing compared to what it used to be i mean what yeah, she but, said maybe elliot you're, you're saying LPs. elliot you're saying stuff that they've been saying for 20 years or what at least no, in the last 10 years since streaming they, started no but no but they 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 make their money touring uh, recorded selling records is not how they make their money. Touring. And well, my point is about being, other. but Rob, my point is about being a songwriter. That's a major part of the music industry, being a songwriter. Right. And then if you own your publishing of your songs, which a lot of people are not smart and giving good advice, when they get into songwriting, they sell off their publishing. That's where you make the money as a songwriter. Well, so if, exactly, so you're, leaving, you're, if you're you'll, leaving off a, a, a bit of the. No, look, if I oh, disagree, you know, Rob. If you'll look, uh, the, these guys wrote these songs with Taylor Swift about 15 years ago, and they're they're major songwriters. They're do they not, own, do they own their publishing? I, I would have to look that up. But these are major songwriters. These aren't people that lucked up and got a co-write on a song. These yeah. are people that are professionals. That's what they're doing for a living. Do you remember way back when Bruce Springsteen first broke up the E Street Band when he went solo for a few years and stuff? He gave, I think he gave every member of the E Street Band either two to three million dollars. I forgot what it was, it's something like that. Because he wasn't going to be playing. I mean, eventually they regroup, but it took what a decade? I don't remember what that was. Okay. I, now, oh, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm not talking this down down to Taylor Swift. I don't think she's a, I think she's a very nice person and, and takes care of her employees and things like that. I, I'm just talking about the business uh, model for the music industry is broken now That's because of be yeah. uh, There's no way one co-writing credit on her album is six figures plus money for the exactly. rest of your life. Exactly. Exactly. Unless she sold the publishing to it. I, yeah. I, I say no. I say no now. No, I, I can't look it up. This was a major songwriter speaking about this, and he I'm sure he was talking. I'm spinning now. I, yeah, I'm sure she was talking about a quarterly, a, a, yeah, but that's a, no, you're not, getting, nine, you're not getting $900. I mean, that's weird. I don't know what there's something, yeah, wrong. isn't that something you get to re record your own music after the they've had it for a while and it's the way around? You could do it anytime, right you can re record yeah. your stuff anytime. Well, apparently, after 15 years, though, so, uh, it's there's a more there's a kind of a moratorium on it, and then then you get all the money kind of thing is what happens. Well, excuse me, excuse me, I'm enjoying the conversation, yes. everybody. I, I don't want to just leave, but I do have to go now. So, all right, Joe. It was a nice great being you. here. Thanks nice a lot, everybody. You, Thank you, Bye, Joe. Joe. Great to have well, you on care. here. I know. Uh, You're welcome know, anytime instance, you want. Doors always open. I, all right. I know, uh, I know for instance, that. Uh, uh, <laughs> The, Take your Ms. time. Tambourine man, no, not Miss Tambourine Man. Uh, uh, five miles high. What was it? The the bird song. The birds. Yeah. Eight, Rod, miles, Rod, eight, eight miles high. It's that's three miles, miles higher high. than five. Yeah. And Rod, 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 Roger, Roger McGuinn fairly recently said that uh, maybe about three or four years ago said that he had some astronomically high number of uh, of downloads for that song yeah. play or, or streaming hits for that song and he made a few hundred dollars oh yeah streaming oh, yeah, yeah. Streaming's i agree with that streaming's fuck for artists yeah yeah exactly i mean but now how many records does taylor swift sell i'm talking about physical records oh, she sells oh, more, more than anybody else more than but, anybody but, else. but, but yeah. elliot, but, elliot there's but, other factors that go into the money made in the publishing that just i understand right. that if you own your own publishing rights you you're if somebody else owns your publishing rights you're not going to make nearly as much you're going to make a pittance i understand all that so but whatever way you you work it if taylor smith swift's selling two hundred thousand 
physical copies of one of her LPs. That is nothing compared to, uh, and, and most of it is streaming. That is nothing compared to what pre-streaming when people were selling CDs and LPs, oh, I, that is yeah. nothing compared Absolutely. to what those same artists were were selling. Elliot, I would argue that people paying, what is it, $15 a month for Apple or Amazon or Spotify is way too little to have millions and millions and millions of songs. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, maybe I'm just used to old school, but that is cheap. $15 a month to get any record, you know, you don't own it, but you, you know, it's... It, yeah. Okay, hang on, Massey. We got baby Nile. He's either in a limo, stretch limo, being carted somewhere, or he's a getaway driver in a bank robbery. What is going <laughs> on, BB Nile? No, nah, Massey, I'm at a record show waiting for it to open. That's yeah, because I can see you looking over. It's like, Jesus, they're on to me, or, you know, what's nah, going on? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just looking at the record nerds gathering at the, at the early okay. Any there. record nerds you recognize? Any of your fan base out there? No, but I see like several people obviously watching Rachel's ghost show. I mean, they're because they're very upset. And, they're yeah, they're on their <laughs> phone. Well, they're saying, how can Rachel say that the Hackney Diamonds album is good but not great? Yeah. So, but I do know that, that it, it, if an artist had written a song when Elliot started his his talk, by the time Elliot ended his talk, he could have re-recorded it. And, and he could have done his uh, new re-recording to get all the money. And I know that if Patrick continues to use that same joke line, yes. it's gonna bound to get old for a lot of people. It's very elderly. It never gets old. It never gets old, Elliot. It never gets old for me. Okay, now Patrick, you are unrelenting. You're okay, the Rob on, Walker. Uh oh, that's the stuff of my of my, uh, of my world. Uh, Okay, now Patrick, how did the Johnny Darko interview go? It went it went really well. I thought it, I think it went well. So I mean, it was it was a lot of fun. And then I did a I did chances. I did I did an interview with Chance like yesterday too. So yeah. oh, cool. finally, yeah, we're, getting wow. angry. we're getting hold on we're now getting now he's just doing interviews with him. everybody. Are you oh, a, where are you? Oh yeah, you're going to go on the Chance. Hey, Patrick, are you on a promo you tour? Right? Right? Is oh. that it? Okay. No, I, this this is my overexposure week apparently. So, because then I was on the Westman panel yesterday with with you. Yes. So, I mean, oh wow! So, Holy smokes! Hey. So, so I, I've been hey, Mike, welcome to TV show. Uh, bring us up to date. What's happening? Talk to me. You guys are just, fucking nuts. You just like threw me off the side, didn't you, Rachel? You just literally <laughs> just like tossed me aside. Like, oh, like, just I, like I got a big big name here, uh, PB Sal. Uh, okay, <laughs> Mike. Go ahead. What's going on? No, but he's got an interesting story. Something's happening. It's like we're all nuts. What's yeah, going on? Nuts. Like? The, oh man, I watching my phone this morning. I've been shaking yes. for like twenty five minutes. You guys, or, did good. you find your the bile uh, rising? Uh, You're getting angry. God, it's worse than normal. It just. Opinions. It's worse than normal. He keeps trying to sell Rolling Stones records. Holy and you're shit! Like, uh, all right, go uh, ahead, Mike. Uh, talk to first me. Of all. Everybody bagging on that Rolling Stones record. Let me tell you something. Oh no, I, no, I, no, no, I heard, I heard, no. I heard, hold on, you got Rob. one fanboy. I heard, I heard Rob. Rob's a smart man. See, I like oh, it. Boy. I like it. That record is fantastic. And that record, I'm selling a ton of that record, way more than I have on of any modern record. I mean, I think I've sold more of that record than Adele Thirty. Yeah, it doesn't cool. mean it's great. True. <laughs> Those guys are a, a, 80 hey, years Mike, old. Mike, I'm going to buy the damn record, but I'm just You're saying. 80 years old. Listen to how good that album is for Listen, Ringo. I'm going to. What the you hell is this? It, it, it is. A, it's a good record. It's a good Rachel, record. I would take that last Rolling Stones record over the last 10 Paul McCartney records. Oh, you well, can, I would too. I don't album. own the last 10 Paul McCartney albums. <laughs> that record but I'm going to own the Rolling <laughs> Stones one. And listen to it more than once, too, because some of those songs will grow on you more than I'm you just think. saying, no, it's good. It's a good album. Don't get me wrong. It's a good album. But it's certainly not breaking any new ground. They got a nice old blues tune to close out with. They don't need they to got, break any They're doing the Give Me Shelter Part 2 on it. I can't think That's of many. <clears throat> there are not many Stones records that broke new ground. <clears throat> yeah. It was a, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, what's going oh, start on, me up. Like, tattoo you, start me up. Was a brand new song. It had a new vibe. It was a, it new, was a new riff. Everything. It was a new ground. Yeah. musically. It was a new riff. A yeah, riff. yeah. But it was. It had the hook. It was. It was. Yeah, he had it had great hook. Yeah. Record, it's not, you're not breaking new ground. 
The record it's does inspired. the same thing that all great Rolling Stones albums does. It's got three or four tunes with really <clears throat> great riffs. And that's a typical Keith Richards, Rolling Stone move. Good tunes with great riffs that get stuck in your head. They're not overly complicated. They're not hard, but they're catchy and they get stuck in your head. Start Me Up. It's, I mean, these are the same type of songs on a new album. And put this against anything else that's coming out. I don't care who's putting out records. I put that up against most albums that have well, come out. Yeah, but it's generally agreed upon that modern music currently as the state of no, the well, industry is not that healthy. Well, hold on. Let, I have a question for Mike then. Name another record that's come out recently that's or probably many that have been just disappointments. Both if it's any legacy art, if it's anybody yeah. from the 70s, I would venture to say, and I'd have to be reminded of something good, but they're all trash. Yeah, they're all mediocre. I'll, I'll tell you who did a nice album are, and these it guys hasn't, aren't putting yeah. records out on this level. A nice album that came out that hasn't been really heralded as, as being great or anything, but I really enjoyed it. It's the latest by Jenny Lewis, A Joy You All. It's really good. I like it. Yeah, but that's not the legacy artist he's talking. No, about. she's not legacy. I agree, but it's a great album. It's a it's a it's a great album. It's good. Uh, is, I like uh, it better than Stones. Is Chuck Lavelle on this album a lot? Is no, he, I don't think he's on it at all. Is that a boxer, Elliot? I know he is. He's not on you it. Know who Chuck fighter? Lavelle is Rob MMA fighter. You don't know who Chuck Lavelle is? Almond Brothers. <laughs> MMA fighter. I mean, down. Uh, he was a champion. Rob, this is what about. I'm trying to say. Totally Even though you met Mick Jagger and yeah, the, some sort he, of sorted sorted. Mike, trip. the stores up in Seattle. Down in the streets of LA. The stores in Seattle are selling this out of it. The hard yeah, rock listen, Rachel, Rachel some Chuck, Sunday, Chuck me and you're going to meet in the ring. It's Chuck selling Lavelle like is the music. Stuff. Chuck Lavelle is the music director for the Rolling Stones. All oh, right. Okay. That record's selling great. And, you know, I can first of all, I played the record. 17 times in the store now so it's, it's even better on the hey, hey, play, hey. The but uh, every time i play it like somebody's like this is the new stones album i wasn't planning on getting this this is really good i'm gonna buy this i mean it's catchy and it's catching people and they're buying it because of anyway it. we're hey, gonna uh, buy uh, your uh, damn uh, record mike hey mike a couple things i think great records in phoenix arizona <laughs> by the way for all your record recording needs Hey Mike, like a couple things. So you have four of the you lot. have four of the baseball variants of the record. Which one is selling the best? The Diamondbacks. <laughs> now Chuck Liddell, is he the pillow guy? Oh. You want to know why? Because I ordered the most Diamondbacks, and the other one sold out first. <laughs> so my other question is: yes. I think you should add on your website your top selling records. I think that would be a cool. Oh, oh, hot sellers, like, like a hot sellers list. They're, they're on there, actually. There's a way you can figure it out, but the problem is it goes through like a the top sellers ever. It doesn't give you a time frame. <laughs> oh, man. That Loki, would be Neil, please settle. Loki's getting very upset. He doesn't want to be embarrassed that Don Ho is so high. Okay, oh. now, we got to turn our attention quickly to a health crisis. We've got Paul Cycle Club. He has a GoFundMe. Things are going really good because look at this. He's brought the cane out. This is showing how serious things are with Paul. Paul, are you walking at all at this point? Yes. Yeah, I, I as of yesterday, I am now, I went from walker to cane, and now I'm cleared to drive. So well, we're getting there. Get we're getting there real nice. Right, so, sure. Hey, everyone in uh, Arkansas, watch out for your lives, please. <laughs> all right. This is okay. What happened to Patrick? Uh, Patrick He's got dry. very angry. He went to a, to a radio show. Uh, to the record the store, record and now he's all because he was waiting for it to start. And then when you came on, Mike, you were such a big presence. He's just come out of the Johnny Darko show. He's been on the Steve Westman show. He's riding so high this wave of popularity. He has got threatened by an established star like yeah. yourself, Mike. Chuck Lavelle. Wasn't Chuck Lavelle in the Almond Brothers for a while? Yes, of course he was. Okay. The whole brothers and sisters period. Yeah. Right. Okay. C yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Give him hell, Elliot. Elliot has fed if, the hell up. If with you don't know, know. Uh, obviously Aggie knows who Chuck I Lavelle is. is. If you don't know who Chuck Lavelle is, then you're not paying attention to. Hey, Elliot was he a wide receiver for Appalachian State? 
It's pronounced oh Appalachian, God. not Appalachian. Come Look at on, all those great guesses, <laughs> man. Good gosh. But hey, you, here's here's two. I don't uh, think Chuck Lavelle's on the new album. I mean, Elton John's on a cut, but um, you got uh, Stevie Wonder, Elton John. We, we keep talking about these legacy acts. Doggone it! There's great artists out there that are relatively new. Here's a few. People ought to be scooping up this album right here. Is that Matt, Rick Ocasek? Matt Clifford, piano <laughs> organ. Matt <laughs> Clifford, Looks like Rick. Piano Molly organ. Toddle. People ought yeah. to be getting the Rihanna Giddens new album. All right. Ellie. My gosh, you just want to pull it surprise for right. music. All right. Now, are you selling he it? Is out, he has had it with you people. Yeah. I'll, sell two, I'll sell two copies of Rihanna Giddens. I'll sell two copies of uh, Molly Tuttle and 200 copies of the Rolling Stones. Yeah, it's a dollar sale. I'm glad, you, here's I'm glad we're selling out there. Let's go. Okay, it. hold on now. Here's more trouble. If you weren't mad enough already, Loki Theo, this will set you over the edge. Rolling Stone magazine recently did their 250 guitar players of all time. Molly Tuttle's on the list. She is. She's a they great are, I think they've gone to pot. I think Rolling Stone's so out of touch. Them and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, those institutions are so far left that you don't even know what's coming. They got me. For the love of God, they needed a transsexual Indian on there. I am now number 176 on Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Rolling Stone magazine stuff guitar players of all time because I've got my guitars. Thank you, Rolling Stone. Represent trans Indians. Yes. Oh. Marvel. God so I know, it. I think this is too much. I, I think, think I might need to go back to bed after this. Mazzy Settle, oh. you're liberal <laughs> down. This is the very thing we're talking about. Mazzy, do you think they've gone too far to the left with their uh, rock and roll legends of guitar? I, you're talking about Rolling Stone? Yes. I just think it's it doesn't really matter about music anymore at that magazine. It's a lifestyle magazine, and okay. it's it's yeah. And I'm not going to be, I mean, we could all be like old farts. Oh, back in our day, it meant something. It, everything was different then. It's just different. But it's not, you know, and most true music things, it's not their go-to music magazine. It's different. But they're not wrong about Molly Toe. No, they're not wrong about Molly Toe. You know, they, yeah. I mean, look at Jan Winter where he's he stuck his foot in his mouth. See, too. David knows Molly Tuttle is a great bluegrass guitar player. Not sure how she got on the Rolling Stone top 250. Like. Because they recognize great guitarists regardless of the genre. I think they're playing a little bit of a game there. Was Ry Cooter? Ry Cooter's probably not even on the list. Oh, I'm Is sure Ry Cooter, I don't think he made the list at all. I don't oh, think he did. Oh, you kid yourself. You but Molly Tuttle's there. Didn't they put like uh, Public right Enemy right there. on one of the top twenty greatest albums of all time? Maybe top ten. Which album? Public Enemy. Yeah, it's a, it's a different. Uh, you know, every all know. different cultures and different genres. People, it's different now. They mix it. I mean, you know, whatever you're going to say, good or bad. Rolling Stone started out as sort of under, not underground, but rock and roll at the time in 1967. It was a different time. You know, they it were was, an R&B cover band, Mazzy. It, yeah, I know that. It it wasn't about soul music. It wasn't about jazz. It was, you know, that's what it was. And then it would merge. I mean, that's just the way it was. That's how the magazine started. It, it oh, just, oh, I was talking about the artist. And the, uh, the irony was it was started by Yen Winter and Ralph Jake Leeson, who was a jazz critic, a big jazz guy, but also pioneered uh, San Francisco bands like the Airplane and the Dead and the ballroom scene. But he was a jazz guy, so it's ironic that they didn't do any jazz because it was about the culture of 1967. Well, how, West many, Coast, San how many people were under the age of 30 in 1967? A Six. huge amount. Yeah. That was the, 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 the middle boomers. of the baby, boom. the baby boomers. And yeah. they, where was the disposable income? It was among the young people. And what were the young people listening to? Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Elliot, yeah. did you consider look rolling? At the demographics, look at the demographics today. There's not nearly the proportion of younger people out there consuming prop. You have a lot of extra money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Elliot, yes, did you get you the were, new Stones Chris. album? Did you get the new Stones album, Elliot? Uh, no, I, I won't buy it. I'll put on uh, Let It Bleed or something. Or how many, all Main Street when how I'm many Rolling Stones records do you have in your collection? About 25. 25, but not this one. No. I'm getting it, Mike. 
You should get it. <laughs> I, 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 love, I like the Rolling Stones. I saw them live one time. They'll never like be them. Uh, <laughs> down. There's I'm never going to be another band that can sell out a stadium for 60 years in a row. Hey, I, 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 saw the, roll act. I, I saw them on their Voodoo Lounge tour in Carter Finley Stadium. They were like little ants on stage from where I was sitting. <laughs> Why? I, I'm, I don't care about how big a draw you can in the stadium. What what good is watching them on a big big screen and seeing the little ant sized people? Well, you can see that about it. That's any stadium. It's, it's, it's an event. It's not, but it's better. Better see that. that. That's true. You know, that I agree with Elliot. That's any stadium show. Yeah, but get a better stadium. seat for the. Love That's of why God. you should go to clubs. Go to. Right. Right. I'd rather go right. in the. Right. Right. I'd rather go to the local. Can we start a GoFundMe go from Elliot to get a copy of this? I book? want him to get higher, better seats. We should go fund me so he can see a concert from a proper vantage point. For hey, them. Marvin, that is literally what I just said. I, hey, Rachel, I think someone went to Elliot and said, I'm taking your Stones concert and just set up a little arena with hands. Yeah, that's probably what it was. The oh. thing is, George is not wrong. I mean, It'll in five years we'll know how great this record is. You can enjoy it now, but yeah. what happens with any of these artists, whether it's McCartney or Stones or legacy artists or Dylan, you play it, you're excited about it, it's new, and then you never pull it out again, or all of a sudden it becomes a classic. You can go either direction. I know I'm gonna buy it. It's a good album. I don't say it's average, it's above average. It's a good album. It's and it, in fact it's a great album if you're measuring the stones by most other acts. That was, oh yeah, we got to get Ruthanna. Ruthanna, you ready to come up too? Let's get have, Ruthanna here. I was uh, front row at their last stadium show. That was their Hold second. Hold on, we got to bring probably. you up. Now let's see what's going on here. Who is that? That's Mick Jagger. Oh, I can't see. Okay. That's see, Elliot. That's how you need to see him. Yeah. That was uh, I was uh, on the rail, front row at their last. But stadium. you don't get greased from the record companies. No. Okay. Greased? Actually, you're the one who gets greased, man. I've been watching some of your videos lately, thinking to myself, "What the hell?" Okay. That's what, what do you Where's mean? Where's my freebies? Hell? Where's my free records? Well, I'm an influencer. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be an influencer. I need to call you. You, you are. Man. You. No, I'm not. You know, okay. the last free record I got was months ago. Mike, while you're here, I want to put young. Maybe, possibly, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do it. But put young Alex Dickey's uh, heart and soul at rest and concerns Rachel. and fears. Are you doing okay? Is, are you happy with Alex right now? How is he rating for you? Is, are you doing okay? What's the relationship like in 2023 years? We find ourselves. You know, I, I like Alex. I don't know if I have a relationship per se, and I don't talk to him on the side, but okay. Alex is, I'm a fan of Alex. He's okay. Just, this is what he needs to hear. I get so concerned over him. He felt he may have gone too far. There was probably, and this is really where we needed Elliot. He went, Elliot was doing uh, this thing, the hush, Russell and Hustle. Anyway, hustle and the, flow. Hustle, hustle and flow. And hustle. hustle and hustle. Hustle, or, uh, hustle and flow. And Elliot loves it. But Dickie was talking about you getting blowjobs or something. Or it's, oh, it was God. just went crazy. The review went sideways. Elliot was fit to be tie dyed. He still hasn't fully recovered from his hustle and flow. Oh, Don't disparage hustle and flow, doggone it. Okay. So then, but also there was blowjobs involved with your movie, Elliot. Something like that happened. Well, not on screen. Wow. Not wow. on screen. Okay. And I was, <laughs> Rachel, I'm hey, just yeah. amazed that... And look, I was taken up for Mike on that. I thought that was a a, a, a vulgar question to ask Mike. Uh, and, and the use of hustle and flow was right. totally wrong in doing so as well. Well, it was so intense that it led, it led Dickie to think that Mike had outed him and would never appear on this very program again. So, Mike, I had your back that. on that, buddy. Okay, Rob, sorry. What do you got there, young man? No, no, this is from when I saw the stones. Okay, good. See, they aren't ants there. You can see them. Yeah, they oh, are. Man. That's a blown up screen. Uh, no, but look uh, in front. You can see the boys there. I mean, my, my seats were good. I, I was directly, I mean, there's a panorama of where I was sitting. I was on, I was right above the floor. Yeah, the that's not too bad at all. I was I mean, they, they did like two weeks of shows at Staples Center. And then yes. they sort of couldn't start sell tickets. So that day tickets were 50 bucks. So I bought them and went. Was that 2013? Yeah. I saw them right after that in San Jose. Yeah. Here's 
Oops. Okay, what's happening, Norman? Here's one of my um, shots of the stones. Oh, there you go. Look, at, look at that. Winterland 1972. <laughs> Did you take that? <coughs> I took this. Winterland 1972. No, really, uh, But Madison. that's not a Zoom pick, is it? <laughs> no, go back. Go back. Wow. This is Stevie Wonder opened up the show. Yeah. Look at that classic stones right there, kids. Let's see. Um, McBurney Kravitz opened the show. I saw. Daddy Bog, you're you should be here learning. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's the same thing here, George. Last time I saw them was Steel Wheels. So that was still a few years before the cell phones, the smartphones, to start coming into people's hands to you know show at the concert and everything. And everything's changed quite a bit, right? Yeah, Mitch, you're absolutely right. Those are great shots. But yeah, if you go to a concert, you know, if you you know, I know the pricing is ridiculous nowadays, but fortunately back in 72, you could still get a decent uh, seat for uh, you know, not selling the, the Well, Winterland car. only was held uh 5,000 people and the reason they played a stadium that small in 72 at the beginning yeah. of the um, exile tour is because three years earlier they played Altamont, which was a disaster. And so it's sort of a thank you or Bill Graham got him to do this thing. They played four shows of four and an eight o'clock, two days in a row. Okay. Let's go back to that uh, hollow ground, 1972. You got your camera with you. Were you nervous about the camera? Was there any sign saying no flash photography? Anything I didn't use flash. Nature. I used I used a Mamiya 35 millimeter. I used a Agfa 500 speed film yeah. that I pushed to 2000 and a 200 millimeter lens. But this is like a couple about a, a year or two later. I think it was 74 or 70, 74. <laughs> they stopped le letting you bring cameras in. Um, Rob, I got the. That's a study bog. Uh, how do you handle people that uh, stand back? You're very excited about this new Stone album. You and Mike are probably the most. Well, wait, wait, hold on, Ra Rachel. You, yeah, you're. This is Daddy Bob. Oh yeah, you're misinterpreting what he's saying. Oh, oh, he's talking about kidney stones. He just oh. passed a few. <laughs> oh no, Daddy Bob. No, it's a, but it's a great album. Hot Rocks is a fantastic greatest hits album, but uh, there's so much more Stones. Uh, Rolling Stone songs. In fact, there's even more Hot Rocks and Face Cookies that you can buy for your collection. Folks, here's our friend Ruth Ann alive coming in. Hi, Ruth Ann. I haven't got my camera right. I thought I had it perfect. It seems. <laughs> it that's seems. perfect. Right? That's, that's perfect. perfect. That's perfect. All Ruth right. Ann, that's perfect. Yes. There, push, push the button that says stop camera. Oh my God! Yeah, that was a heck of an intro. I'm kidding. Just go yeah. wash your beard. <laughs> Hi, Ruth. I'm welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? I'm doing amazingly well. Okay, now what do you think about these Rolling Stones? Do you like that band? I love the Stones. In fact, that was the second to last. No, it wasn't. I saw the Stones after one of the most romantic days of my life in Napa. Oh, that whenever you say romance, I like to make call There we go. It was raining outside. Oh, Johnny out there, too. Yes, keep we going. Keep time. going. Really good. So, time. you were romantic. It was romantic that you went in. So, what concert, what year was it? Do you remember the year of the concert, what they were called? I don't. I don't. We were a little tipsy because of all the wine country yeah. stuff and all the food and everything else. But what decade uh, was it? Was it the seventies or the eighties or the nineties? Oh, it was definitely the nineties, late nineties. And okay, um, probably in Bridges Oakland. to Babylon. It was probably the Bridges to Babylon tour you saw. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was. Fantastic. By the way, we're we ten people so deep fun. on this. That's I can't believe it, what I'm listening to. It's a deep dive. Now, Johnny L., go ahead. What do you, I can't you believe this. What's happening? I, I, I can't believe the the negativity of about the Rolling Stones, about this album. 
Well, what's the negativity, I, John? I, I don't think there's a lot of negativity. I, I don't think some, you some, commit some one of the biggest rock and roll sellouts in the history of rock and roll. Some saying it's not as good. Some saying it's not as good. Hold on, I want to hear Johnny. Settle down. What, Johnny? Johnny is on fire here. Johnny, what is that? Time out. Time out. Some saying it's not as good. I love. Actually, I'm sorry. Sorry, Johnny. Oh. I okay, had go ahead. A great I'll, I'll, I'll mute. I had a What's great point? time at that. I had a great time at that concert, and the music was fun, and it's all about the music. Yeah. So if you don't like the Stones, you know, that's really okay. My experience was wonderful. Now, that's all I want to say. Now, oh, hold on. The only I'm negativity, negativity is Craig Danger. Joey. Joey. Okay. No, Johnny, the, go ahead. Oh so tell God. me, what are you thinking what here, Johnny? What am I coming to here? Okay, no, I'm Johnny, the... you're doing good. Go ahead. What's going on, man? Oh, my man? God. Johnny's I'm, reaching the they... end of his line. I'm... <laughs> Uh, the negativity is what I'm, say, I'm hearing is, oh, well, it's not as good as, you know, as they should be or this or that. Well, my my thing is, is I'd like to see anyone of you or anybody out there at their age going on stage and touring at their age. And not only that, they, they're they still around tour. I, I, I bet you that half of the friggin' uh, mediocre groups that are out now will not make it to that age uh, going on stage. So they, they're, 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 music industry, some of these actually, some of the groups nowadays are lucky are lucky enough to some of these groups nowadays are lucky enough to make it to, to two years of of of, uh, of being a group. The Stones and they need auto have made tune. it, and they're, they they're like tune. in their eighties, almost in their eighties, almost in their eighties. So, Amazing, isn't it? To say that Hackney Hackney Diamonds is a mediocre is the great is, business oh, well, people. No, no. I heard a couple of tracks. I, I heard a couple of tracks. I'm still waiting for my Hackney Diamond that nobody, I ordered. Nobody I hope says, I, get it, I haven't I even pre, heard I one word. It, but... Hold on there, little firecracker. I haven't heard one person say it's mediocre. Nobody said mediocre. Not one person. Well, that's the impression you I you got. Take one giant, you take one giant step back there, little Bucky. You bucky. know, the reality but is. I'm going to gonna... tell you something. This, this Hackney Diamonds is a good album. Yeah. No one's saying it's mediocre. It's a good album. And I don't know, Elliot's going to buy a Molly Tuttle record over the song. Oh, oh, hold, hold on. Oh, oh, hold on. I think Darren Rice buy a Molly Tuttle record over the song. must have peace. Oh, you you must. Was Molly, was Molly Tuttle in the Turtles? You, you darn right buy a Molly Tuttle, a new Molly Tuttle album Negative. over a legacy rock act Negative. that's in their 80s. Come on now. You're talking about new creative music, yep. songwriting. Great musicianship, <clears throat> and it's not something that's a regurgitation of stuff from the past. Yeah, I say buy new music. Yeah, don't, don't hey. get stuck in the past. Hey, that's wait a second! We'll, don't watch we'll, old we'll, funny duddies videos like Elliot's. But we'll see how young people. Like <laughs> I have a question well, let, for let's Mike. See. Now, I, I agree. I agree with Elliot, but let's see how long my um, tut Tuttle, whatever you said, how how long they last. Compared to the it's how long because the there's no music have industry. Lasted. Mike, I have forget a about her. She's been performing professionally. I think she's about thirty years old now. She's been performing. There's, only, there's one thing we can agree on. Greg, show some records and show some of that mediocre music. Mike, I let me tell. Part. Let me say this though. Oh, she, right. She's about thirty Robert, years old, Robert, Robert. and she's been playing professionally since she was about fourteen. Okay. So she's, she's got sixteen she years under her belt so far. Boom. So she's I have a two-part question for Mike. First of all. Do young people go into your store? And if they do, are young people buying younger people buying the Stones album or just old retirees who are about to die in Arizona? So, whoa, whoa! That's actually I, I haven't oh, thought wow. about that until you mentioned it. I'm not really it's selling. Framing. I'm not really selling it to like people in their twenties. I will say it's I'm doing better with it. People in their thirties and older. Okay, mm. that's kind of. But you're right; it hasn't wow. really hit. The twenty people but you with know the what? Income to dispose of, right? Most of those customers, anyways. I think most of those listeners in general are uh, not vinyl buyers. I think, uh -huh. you know, they do buy vinyl, but I would say a majority of vinyl buyers are like thirty and forty at this point. Okay, okay. Older Gen Z not, uh, would yeah. be, uh, I think, the case. And are they buying the Rolling Stones album? They are. 
but the younger crowd is not. But I'm going to play it three or four more times today, so I'll report back to you and see how the Saturday of Rolling Stones play. I'm just, I'm what just like together in a year, man. The younger like, crowd appears to be I heavily go, invested in big pants. That all I heard, I played it to death. If I hear that Hackney Diamond sing <laughs> one more time, I well, just, all I hear is this Hackney Diamond. My, <laughs> my employees are going mad. Like they come uh, up in the back and they just shake their head and they walk back in the back room. They're like again. They well, might not be wrong. Mark. Can you imagine if working at Starbucks when that McCartney record came out that Starbucks kept pushing? They had to play that every half that's hour. That's not the only God. Marvel record wow. that Starbucks released, man. Yeah. Right? That's a good way to get people to sit, to get yeah, out we, of your we, shop. We you know what I mean? Buy the coffee, get the hell out. We had times in our chain where a label would pay, I hate to say pay to play, but they would give us product and we'd have to pay a certain record like every two hours or every twi five times a day. There are certain records like that when they came out. Jethro Payola. Tull Passion Play. Ugh. Playing that five times a day. Yeah, imagine having to listen to Fu You. At somebody Starbucks has a good question hour. to Mike. <laughs> at Go every ahead. half hour. Go ahead, Elliot. Uh, somebody, I just, uh, I'm trying to see what, who, uh, Aggie 88 it asked if, if talking to Mike, if you played Molly Tuttle's new album in the store, would customers say, who's that, and buy the album? You know, some possible. I mean, I'll put on a Beatles record and people will say, Who's that? and buy the record. So, <clears throat> that well, makes sense. You know, I, I think people people get stuck in a rut, music, vinyl, music wise. They oh, God, here comes Rob. I knew it. I, it was a setup. Oh, hold Ellie, on. Are you I, doing this? I What's going on? on? Yeah. I have a business I proposition. Somewhere. No way. I have a business proposition for girl. Mike. What's Mike, that? let's get a giant life-size cardboard standee of Elliot, mm -hmm. and it's called Elliot's Pick. Set it up in your store, and he's like holding the record, and yeah. see how many you sell. Well, I'm going That's straight to Elliot. Good picks. idea. By the I way, like yeah, you got idea. a customer right off the right out of the gate. I'm Ellie, going straight to Elliot's Pick. So take that, Rob. I don't think I would be the best. I don't think I would be the best representative. You would make a great cutout, and you just do Elliot's Pick. <laughs> look, look, great Elliot. Here's another one. Is this selling, Mike? It'd be like that. okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this, this artist is a uh, Gutenberg recipient. She's uh, she's uh, won a Pulitzer Prize this year. She's putting out tremendous. The guy that invented music that that people need to hear and the guy that invented printing what, what's the the Ooh. genius award? Get the, gutenberg the, the gutenberg press right i'm the genius award is that the name is that name? Touché, oh, no. massey all the jewish names <laughs> sound alike massey give them a break i don't think <laughs> is, <anybody laughs> is that steve gutenberg <laughs> is that we what? love little rihanna get him and she's touring little all rihanna over the him. world and you know she's an amazing, amazing artist. She won an award from the guy from Police Academy. Oh my God! Yeah, you know, she actually she won a Pulitzer for music this year, Rob. Rear window or no? What's front window? What is this? This is a great window. experiment. Can we have a live stream from the store playing Molly Tuttle all day and seeing how many copies are sold at the end of the day? What it? What a live stream! The Molly Tuttle. Let's put the Molly Tuttle record. I'm trying to put like, the end groove out of business. I love it. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. It's a great idea. Well, I mean, I'm assuming, Mike, you play a variety of different music in the store. You don't just play the same. Obviously, you're playing the Rolling Stones over and over right now, but uh, don't don't you play a, a wide variety of music? I mean, uh, I do, but I try not to piss the customers off too bad. Like, I had a Saturday once, and I mean, the place was <laughs> packed. There was like 25, 30 people, and I put on side two of the Toronto concert, and I cleared the whole store. Uh, so, uh, what artist? Yeah. That'd be the uh, Plastic Ono band. Live piece yeah. in Toronto. Yoko. Oh, oh no, live no, piece in not. Toronto with Yoko. Okay, it's Yoko bashing time for my. No, I like <clears throat> Yoko. I like that album, and I actually prefer side. You two don't have to say that, Mike. Over I mean, it's okay. I, true. I do. I think it's great. I love it. it's avant garde. Sometimes I know store owners in order to clean the the vagrants, the young people hanging out. They'll play stuff like Yoko to make sure the young people leave the area so they don't yep. hang about loitering. 
Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Probably probably a very popular uh, record uh, over the intercom in the front of a 7-Eleven, as a matter of fact. Uh, Tom, uh, uh, get out of here, kids. Go. Right. Oh, get off my lawn. Uh, Tom Cassie? said she won the Guggenheim. It, it's a MacArthur Genius Awards. What she won? Is that yeah, the Guggenheim? Did, did someone leave okay, the cake? The Seven Eleven where I live, yeah. they play opera with super sopranos, <laughs> and for sopranos, at mm -hmm. full tilt, and all the homeless people leave the front of the store. They just vamoose. That's I've heard yeah. that. That's a psychological technique they use. I yeah. wonder if Molly Tuttle, my fear is Molly Tuttle could have the same impact on Mike's uh, customer. Hey, uh, Mike if you don't like opera, you, you're going to be homeless. That's just a fact of life. Story, I mean, please. I love opera. I love opera. I love the orchestra. Exactly. I really so do I. That's homeless, why I have a home. Craig, you have What's been accused of being homeless, Craig. This is how bad I have. Yeah. I got to head out because I got to I'm accused of many things. I got to head Rachel. out because I got to play the Stones album for the third time. I'll watch you and read you, but I'm going to blast the Stones. All right, Ringo. Yeah, I, I got to take brother. off myself. I got to go to the store and do a cartoon. Mike, thank you for I'm, being here. Everyone's I'm gone. Just, I'm Mike, time. put on that Molly Tuttle album. Wait, Mike, put on that Molly Tuttle album. One time, one time. Let's Mike, see I'm just amazed you actually watch some of my videos to know that I get free records. That's like a... I, I watch it and Nazi. I just I yell at the oh, screen. Oh, oh wait, hold Damn on, Nazi. You go on everyone's stream and show you your free records, not just your channel. Whatever, mm -hmm. whatever is doing. I get I get a couple. Every now and then I'll get a one step. I get most of the one steps actually. I do get a lot of one steps. Wow. There you go. But I also get what did I get? Uh, so labels don't do promo copies anymore to stores for in, like uh, you, you get a record for in store play or something. <laughs> Hell no! I'll buy five hundred a record, and I won't get. It. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. Bye, Mazzy. Bye. Bye. Can we get some some Oscar music to play them off? Come on now! Holy fuck! <laughs> it's just crazy. Leave Mazzy alone, uh, even though he gets all those free records. Oh my god! Yeah, all right, Molly, let's Molly see Tuttle what... does do an excellent version of "She's a Rainbow." Yeah, I'm so gonna play the Molly the Tuttle, rainbow. and I'm gonna play the song. <laughs> I'm gonna give you guys the count. We, come back and let us know, Mike. I'm gonna let you know. All right, uh, Mike. That was fantastic. She, she also does a, a what's that? Ra uh, Ratchet, uh, the the punk band. She does uh, rancid, uh, rancid, ra ra rancid. Yeah, rancid. She mm -hmm. does that song Spokane, Washington mm -hmm. by Rancid. That's uh, interesting. So she does a uh, she she has eclectic taste as well. She does a wide variety of music, interprets them. To fit her own acoustic sound. All right, we got Craig Danger on board. He's got some soul records with us. Let's get into some soul music as we learn and go on a joy, a joyous voyage and learning journey <laughs> with Craig. Okay, Craig. Wow, yeah. I, I, I I don't know that I can continue after joyous voyage. Yeah. Rachel. Thank you. Well, well, thank you, beautiful, Craig. You know beautiful what? right there. I tried you, have it. My, oh. you have my permission not to continue. <laughs> Stop it. Okay. Go ahead. Robert. Robert. Well, I mean, first off, oh. we want to talk about uh, Foxy Brown. Uh, ooh. And by the way, let me let me do a, an impression of uh, of Rachel doing me. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Uh, more like Pam it. Greer. Pam Greer, yeah, uh, Foxy Brown. Very beautiful. Uh, this is, this, of course, is the uh, second soundtrack that Willie yeah. Hutch would do. Uh, in uh, He'd do it in 74. Uh, I think he also did the Mac. Uh, yeah. Well known in 74. Yeah. Uh, but this one, I think, is better. That's right. I went ahead I and I said it. You know, Craig, I'm going to actually go to move you where I am here. But you know what? Okay. Because the top billing. Because here's the thing. Uh, uh, Foxy Brown. I mean, my God. Is that Pam Greer is so gorgeous. So Jeez. I get it with, like, I get it when you, you know, if I, you'll be excused if you get a little uh, worked up. Right? You'll be excused <laughs> if you get a little worked up with Pam. Now, that, now, uh, is that just lady. The, Craig, is that just the score? Or does it have the songs, too, from the movie? It's it's all, it's mostly songs, actually, which is what. So, uh, he yeah. lifted a lot of songs from other films, like Across uh, 110th Street is the opening song in the movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, no. This is this is just pure Willie Hutch. There's there's no oh, okay. other uh, artists on this one. So yeah, okay. and very little in terms of scorey stuff. There's there's one song that sounds incredibly like Shaft, but it's him. Uh, but 
yeah, this is all him, and actually a lot of vocal tracks on this, which, uh, in my opinion, I don't love soundtracks because the scoring stuff, I'm like, mm, but that, this uh, is yeah. a lot of songs. And, yeah, uh, but the, and more, is this more soul or funk for you? How would you describe it? Uh, it's funky soul is, is kind of what it is. I mean, Frank, Frank would be all over my ass if I called this funk, and it's not real funk like in your Ohio players kind of a level. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's, but it's be a, a good black exploitation movie. So it uses it uses a lot of the similar kinds of songs that are in those films. Exactly. Thank exactly. you, Rob. Um, Thank so you, I, Rob. I bring this up. Oh, well, I'm going to go to number two now uh, because yeah. of, what am I talking about? You're talking. Uh, I'm about talking about Willie Hutch. This is season for love. Uh, the reason why I'm talking about Willie for Hutch, I'm releasing a video today, kids, uh, ranking the LPs. <laughs> Willie Hutch. All right. Seb, if you're uh, still watching or so, oh, wait, yeah, I'm thinking of Jackie. Uh, I'm wrong, I'm 100% wrong on everything I said. I need somebody to drop a link for uh, Craig. You're right, channel, Rajesh. So you can go I over there and subscribe and support Craig's Jackie effort. Brown. All right, yes, I'm uh, at vinyl record player, as, as a matter of fact. Um, anyway, Willie, Willie Hutch, season for love, uh, on RCA, uh, 1970. I actually gave uh, uh, Mazzy a copy of this. Uh, I think it's one of the, I think it basically is the sound. Falling in Love. Uh, fantastic record. Basically, Willie, uh, the, a lot of big story behind this, but basically, uh, RCA won't promote his records. It's terrible. So they're like, you know what we should do? We'll record a pop record and then we can get out of this RB, no payola business. They do that. And then the RB guy's like, mm, he's still black. So it's still RB. So you know how much we're going to promote this record? How about not at all? And then it sells nothing. He moves yeah. on to Motown. Uh, is that uh, the Motown. Of, I believe, I believe, I believe we're falling in love. I believe, I believe, I believe we're falling in love. Is that the one, Craig? Uh, no, that's uh, you fall off the cliff. I it's too believe, late I believe, I believe we're back. falling now, in yeah. love. Don't ask me. I've been wrong all morning, Rachel. <laughs> That, that Rolling Stones record is dreadfully horrible. Oh, you don't say that. I don't want Johnny let up. The last thing that's I want is Johnny getting mad. All right, keep going. Willie Hutch fully exposed his first LP on Motown. Again, not really excellently promoted, but one of his better selling. This would come just before Foxy Brown. Ooh, legendary record. If you do see this, you must buy it. Uh, there really is no option. Uh, anyway, that's my Willie Hutch. But you know what? Uh, yeah. I found what about a, I found Bunny, a... Please, Craig, we got a question. What about the David Porter record VMP just released? Me, I don't mind the David Porter stuff. I want to love the David Porter stuff, but uh, yeah, was, I, and I don't know. I, I don't. I don't buy a lot of forty dollar records, and that alone is my problem with vinyl. Me, please. Um, so you, no. you, you know what? It was a silly record for them to reissue. Yeah, it's I, it's weird and nichey. Um, David Porter, great uh, work with Isaac Hayes. Obviously, wrote uh, all of the Sam and Dave, or a lot of the Sam and Dave classics. But I just don't know that. Yeah, why would you release that record? Like, is is it? People are like, oh, I David Porter, I gotta hear him. No, no, no one's giving that. them the reissue license to do better titles. Uh, hold on, we got another record here to show, Joe. Smokey, Smokey Robinson from 1970. Uh, mm -hmm. Four, produced by who? How about Willie Hutch? This would be uh, one of uh, about like five or six LPs that he produced for major stars. This is Smokey's debut. He leaves the Miracles. Uh, basically creates a genre of soul known yeah. as the Quiet Storm, uh, probably by about seventy-five. Uh, but this album is actually really good. A couple of Willie Hutch. Oh, and what's really fun about this one is who's that on the back? Who's that? Uh, oh, is that William Hutch? It sure is. He gets so, everywhere on the Smoky album. Isn't that and then funny I, that I got, I got one picture. more, one okay. more record, one more, and then that's yeah, but it. Hold and on, Craig, is, isn't that unusual? Yeah. Where the producer would actually have their picture put on the album, right? No, I I've never crazy. seen that before. So I've never seen that's that. why it's weird. Uh, and then I'd like to give a shout out to all of my goat brethren. Oh, Cap Cap found, found, found this interesting series of records. The Astro Musical House of Capricorn. They have these for all signs, as a matter of fact. But what's amazing about this record, it's like from 69. So it's, it's very of the era, is that there's like a full book that where they're talking about not only the songs, but the signs. Where that this gentleman wrote this, of course, is Carol Writer. Uh, he looks no, his Carol. astrologist, I guess. But anyway, oh, it, you know what this no. is? It's all uh, it's all symphonic music. Hey. Uh, yeah, 
Great. Can we Let's see Carol Ryder ones. again? Because he looks a lot like something that's very interesting. Now, I'm so glad uh -oh. we stands here because here we're going to Rob. get into this. Okay, Rob, go ahead. Well, Craig, was Rob. that in the box they leave outside the store where they just say, take the record? <laughs> Admittedly, I didn't. I didn't have to pay much more than five dollars uh, for this. But um, uh, you know what? It, it's all just symphonic music. As an example, uh, the theme from Love Theme from Ben Hur. You know what yeah. else is on here? How about Lady Madonna, which apparently oh, is wow, somehow yeah. related to yeah. being a Capricorn. Um, okay. Anyway, let's, let's interesting do series. Ruth Ann, are you able to look at somebody or engage a few questions, figure out what their signs are with any degree of accuracy? Or is it very hard to do? It's almost impossible to tell somebody's signs. It's like Johnny, as I look at Johnny. It's just that, oh. you know, the sun is, you know, they say, oh, what's your sun sign? But they forget that there's all these other planets, like there's Mercury yes. and Venus. I like and Mars. that simple one. Yeah, I don't like the completely different one. signs. Yeah. I understood there would be no math. I like the simple ones where you just look at somebody and you go, oh, you're like this, and it gets all sexy. Like with Johnny, I would look at Johnny, and I <laughs> no, go, Johnny. Down to the panel. Well, no, I no, want to do, I'm gonna do my guesses first, and then we're going to go, Johnny. Who are we guessing gonna, signs? Yeah, I'm going to read everybody's signs. I'm going to use nice. my intuitive power as a Pisces. I'll tell you right From now. From the ghost. You. All right. You go, power. Here we go, but Rachel. Johnny, you're going to be a Taurus, okay? You're a Taurus of all. Means you and I, I will get along being very a well. Craig, you're going to be a Capricorn because you showed I mean, the Capricorn. Fairly right? obvious, I think. Yeah. Don't don't tell mine. Rob, I no, I won't. Mine. Rob, you're also going to be a Taurus. Elliot, you're going to be a Libra. Okay, you because that's you what I am. Yeah. And that's, that's Ruth actually, Ann, you're the most powerful sign of all. You're going to be a Sagittarius with your ability to shoot an arrow of truth. I am an Aquarian. I am the only human sign in the zodiac. What? Oh, Chris, you are, you're like me. You're a Pisces like me because you're all so cute and fun. Thank you, Chris. Okay, so you're a Capricorn, so I was wrong about Ruthann. Interesting. I don't get these wrong often. No, Ruthann's a Sagittarius. No, she, no, well, I said no, she's an Aquarius. A, She's an Aquarius. I have four planets fine. in Capricorn, though. I have four yeah. planets in Capricorn. So Okay, Johnny, go ahead. Full disclosure. Rachel. Yes. I have something to say. Uh oh, here we go. Um, no, no. Listen. Um, when I came across about this Hackney Diamonds thing. Yeah. Um, and the Rolling Stones. Yes. Um, I, I heard a few. Well, I'm just referring to uh, what, um, where is this, this guy? Go Bill K. Okay, um, let's go find him. Let's he was see. he's ragging on me about well he's first of all he's calling me a name names which I'm not gonna lower myself to his level and call yeah. him any names. He, Bill K, get Debbie, your I, ass up here front and I, center right I, now. I, I'm calling you up on the carpet. No, I, I, I Debbie Downer be, because I Debbie Downer. I said that you know if if the Rolling Stone if any group out there would yes. they were gonna would make it to the like they, they can't they hardly make it for two years or whatever yeah. as a group. That the, it's great that, that the Rolling Stones at their age, and I wish everybody here would at their age would be able to do that. That that um, uh, if they made it at their age to be able to still perform and or get a yes. put out record, I think that's terrific. And the way I took it, because I was laying in bed listening on the on the the phone, which is with with one earpiece, so yeah. the hearing's not that great with that, anyways. It sounded to me like it was just some people were knocking the um, the hack, Acne Diamonds that oh it's it's good but it's not the greatest or whatever blah 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 um, to, and that's the point I was trying to make at their age putting out a record like that and being still around and relevant for like almost over sixty years. I think that's a great accomplishment. So yeah, it's but that's to different. Build that's, I'm just to, taking the album on his own. I'm not giving them extra mercy points because they're just elderly. Yeah, but they're well. No, no, that's not, not just because they're elderly. It's a competitive but, market. When you play your fucking guitar for me, you better play your twanger, Mister, or you're going to face twenty years of solitary. <laughs> I tell you, boy, it's oh it's just the accomplishments that they've made, really, for all these years, right? Um, they are fantastic. The band is great. 
the band is great, but so, this album is a good hey, Rachel, album. Rachel, when we're celebrating old people, yeah. can you join in in praising yeah. President Biden, please? Now hold on. So, yeah, Biden's so, great. So no, I was just I was just uh this Bill K, uh, he's, he's commented about me uh, quite a okay, few times when I was on here. And, listen, Johnny, I'm going to take care of Bill K right now. Ruthann, I need a curse, and I need it fast. That, <laughs> I need you to perform a curse on Bill K. No, I no. want this no. guy having a hard time sleeping listen. for the next week. And that'll no, give listen, him to, that. to To come out with, with calling names. It's, it's, Bill K, it's, you picked the wrong day to pick um, on Johnny. You're getting no, no, cursed, to, and it's to, happening right now. <laughs> to, to come out with, with calling names, I, I mean, come on. I mean, really? You know, yeah, oh, I'm, a Debbie, K, I'm no a Debbie one Downer. It's not, being, K, Johnny. It's, it's not being that Debbie Downer. It's my opinion, and I'm sure a lot of people yeah. have the same opinion. Kreiner, you son of a bitch. Johnny, so, don't you see we're getting you? You are going down today. This is your this is your last warning. The curse is coming, and it's coming so quick. You oh, will be haunted. Your day will on. be haunted. What did, Bill, what did Bill K call Johnny? He's I called him a Debbie Downer. <laughs> if you look, if you, look, you don't call you, a guy a Debbie oh, Downer oh, hold on. to get away with Are it. Are you really that upset what Bill K called you? No, 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 no. That's, That's not right. the point. It's it's what be, what came on what what he wrote before that, and then call. Then I, I agree with Rob Walker. And Sorry. and you know and uh, the. Which is that Johnny L would be the right. coolest member of the right, right, Rachel. I have to leave. I can't put right. up with two old guys going no. at it like this. It's no, really no, Rob. No, Rob. It's not. It's not the the fact that he that that be that be downer thing. Fine. I mean, he wants to lower himself to that level to call people's names. That's so fine. It's just that what what preceded that is you know. Well, you should have your facts straight, Mister. And and the way he said the way he put it, Mister L. You know, like. Uh, about the we have a live this. feud. A okay, live you know, wait, wait, Bill, Bill Kazen. I would have to say, Johnny, other than your being Canadian, Bill <coughs> K is very similar to you. So let's not take it up. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, he, let's love he, each other. The, the Everybody Bill K get is together. a mild mannered guy who likes tinkering oh. with his. Motorcycle. He's fine. He's well, let him tickle root him his motorcycle. Okay. And Listen, climb. because of this, it always requires this happens from time to time. I have to pull this clip out. This is the most horrific thing you'll ever see. <laughs> Joe Cap and Angela Mosca going at each other. This is Bill Kreiner oh. and our own Johnny. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Is that is that the oh wow. What is it? What okay. Oh this what? <laughs> are, the, what? Are, those, are those two hockey what? dudes? All right. Well, those are that guys. Was, like that the was Waffle House here, Saturday. Night. Legends, uh, was hot. The? And Minnesota native Joe Cap, <laughs> incredible football players. But oh, they had off. a lifelong animosity. <laughs> Never awesome. since that moment have I seen two elders. Such as Johnny Allen and Bill Kreiner go at each other with such intense city. No, very no, close comparison. I agree, Rachel. Rachel. I'm, very close. I'm a peaceful. I'm a peaceful. We need an undercard. We need an undercard. I'm a, peace, I'm a peaceful. Them. I'm a peaceful, yeah. loving person. I don't. I don't provoke, or I don't um, look for trouble. <laughs> yes. But hey. when trouble comes to me, I'll I'll fight tooth and nail to. Hey, yeah. When John, trouble comes John, to me, John, John, but you know what, Bill K. Bill K. I forgive you. For hey John, that. Johnny, Johnny, I have to leave. We are friends you, still. I love you. So John, Johnny, you I have to leave. But could you say one thing for me before I leave? Okay, yes, Rob. Rob. What do you want him to say? Can you say Here we go. This Sunday, me and Bill K are gonna go at it. <laughs> no, <laughs> come on. This come Sunday, on. Sunday, oh, Sunday, boy. Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, All right, I now, I see it. before Johnny Rob, L. thanks for being here, <laughs> okay. I'll mess up. Now, uh, we, we, only uh, one leaves the octagon. It's really good. Everything's going good. Johnny, <laughs> you've done here. really good with that. Bill, you've done, you know, Bill, we got a contender. Uh, Ruthann, I want to give her uh, Ruthann a minute. We'll assume my producer said it's Ruthann minute. Ruthann, is there anything on your heart you'd like to talk to the violent community about the peanut gallery here today as we're assembled? <laughs> well, I had a really interesting day yesterday. I had a, a big expense that I did not expect. And I thought, what am I going to do for the rest of the month? 
This is terrible. So I went so to my mail. Happened? There was 150 bucks in my mail. What? Right? How do you yeah, get that? I'm not that. kidding you. I'm not kidding you. Right out of the blue. And then on top of that, I ran into a new neighbor who has terrible shoulder and knee problems. So yeah. I get to work on him, which is, I mean, I'm over the moon with joy over that because I love to do that work. And um, <laughs> oh, and not only that, but he can identify the guy who's been messing with my car. What do you mean? Uh, Hold on, I know, I know nothing about. Whoa, who's messing oh, with your car? What are they doing? Well, they ripped out the antenna. They they uh, just did whatever they could do to destroy the insides. Thankfully, I had all my documents out, but I could oh. see what it was in my mind. And this guy can describe them. Okay. So yeah. what I'm doing right now is I am gearing up to F the hell out of all of them. This guy's going to oh, be really oh, lucky. If go he on gets down. Alive. That's hot, it's Ruth Ann. That's hot. If he gets it out alive. Because I am okay. really pissed. You don't mess okay. with my 30 year old baby. Okay. Now, here's what's go. crazy about this story. Have you thought about doing what they're doing in South Africa, where you get razor wire and live in a compound to kind of fence yourself off? <laughs> to protect Never. your car? Hmm. Never. Because <laughs> that's what they're doing in South Africa right now. We learned about that on today's TV show. I, I know a few people in South Africa, so I know what's going on there. Don't yeah, mess with I, the Wiccans, not in October. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Ever, it's a bad month to ever. mess around. Nobody messes with me ever. I mean, that could be the end. Yeah. <laughs> So you were Depending saying with then you don't you don't so Kreiner's gonna get off with his crime against Johnny. What do you have any advice for Johnny? Like if I was if Kreiner was going after me like this, I'd be fit to be tie-dye. <laughs> so I'd be going, I'd go with that Take Bill Kreiner, you're road. going down. How do you Take handle the road, the Johnny? Pardon? If, Sorry. You know, I mean words will never hurt you. Just oh, take no. the high road. I <laughs> I'm I'm Bill K. I, I subbed to Bill K. I watched some of his videos. I find it very interesting. I have nothing, no problem with them. I, I figured, well, hey, a little bit of excitement, you know. Yes. Bring <laughs> the heat. Show, right? uh, Elliot, you're, you're very elderly as well. Does this kind of thing when other fellow elders get going, <laughs> does it upset you a bit? Do you find that they, oh, you get yeah. the vapors or other troubles? Craig, this is important. I know you're it, so young. This makes me want to go to Waffle House. Vapors? Yes, a Waffle House for you just have a little scroll up the Waffle look. House and you just have a waffle or two and you're feeling better and you mm. just forget about the world. But Craig, even though you're so young and this doesn't impact you directly, yes. at one yeah. point when you're older, this can happen even to a young buck like you. So just because you're youthful, don't get it all out, all uppity because us elders. We have feelings too, and sometimes we'll even get mad at our fellow elders. Uh, right, not, not an elder, Rachel, but yeah. look in your private chat. Oh, uh, there's a link there. there. Yeah, and I don't know if anybody's familiar with the Waffle House Avenger, but this is a short you might want to share with everybody. Okay, this uh, is a short. Well, like, well, I got the. Uh, is it copyrighted? Well, I mean, it's on YouTube. It, there's there's nothing uh, nothing like Waffle House on a Saturday night, uh, and this is just a portion of what happened uh, uh, at that Waffle House in Texas. <laughs> yeah, sorry, so, I would just go ahead. This, sorry, I'll, sorry, go ahead. Okay, I was well, say, well, this well, particular right. the Waffle House Avenger, the lady jumps over the table over the bar of the Waffle House. Yeah, and she proceeds the the waitress proceeds to throw about four vicious right hooks Ooh, in a that's tremendous a, that's a right uppercut. Okay, well, we'll take a look. That's what I'm ready for this. But this, is just a, this is just a little portion. This is America. Let's Here we go. Yeah, this is America on Saturday night. Welcome to the Waffle House. Here we go. Hire these people for the WWE. Oh, jeez. Oh, 
It's just another night at a Waffle House. With all hell breaking loose in a Texas <laughs> Waffle House after workers yelled for this group of customers to leave. But instead, one customer climbs on the counter, one worker later throwing a coffee pot at her, things are flinging, people are falling. It evolves <laughs> into an all-out punching match everyone else is filming on their phones and egging it on, otherwise known as a regular night at a Waffle House. Hire these people for the WWE. Oh, it's just another night at a Waffle House. With all steel right there. That they don't show it in that particular video, but that woman that caught the caught the chair in midair and then spun spun it back at her, that the woman that jumps over and falls down in the in the uh, back of the Waffle House in the grill area, one the cook grabs hold of her and is holding her, and that woman that was throwing that, that caught the chair, she's throwing punches like you wouldn't believe. There's nothing like a Waffle House. You, it's an experience everybody in the world should have. So two o'clock in the morning in any Waffle House, and that's what you'll possibly see. Okay, that's a <laughs> interesting marketing campaign. Kind of Come to the Waffle House for the waffles. Elderly. Stay for the abject I'll violence. Get, I'll, literally, I'll literally, in. they check you for weapons at the door, <laughs> and if you don't have anything, they'll loan you a buck knife and a twenty-two or something like that. I was just laughing at the AGK's comment about the grumpy old, grumpy old men <laughs> fighting. About well, me, anyways, whatever. Um, <laughs> grumpy old men. Yeah, well, nah. It's uh, I, I'll sleep better tonight. I'm not gonna lose any sleep over this. <laughs> okay, look at this. Action hacking down is the best stone cell for forty years. Man, these guys are ten to fifteen years. That's Johnny's point. But Thank you, listen, Thomas. how? My argument is I don't care how old they are. If you're out there competing and putting out a product, it better be freaking pristine and sterling and good and up to the quality that I expect with my hard-earned dollar. So Especially when you're when you're selling 32 different copies of this thing. I mean, but that's if my you're a lip, baby, <laughs> but uh, I've got to go to the washroom now, and I forget the lyric as it goes. You know, like, I'm not going to pay for that, Thomas L. So, yeah. it, and you're in 40 years, right? Isn't that track three on the LP, Rachel? It is I, I, you're you're doing track three, track right? Three. Yeah. I am. I go, <laughs> look at this. I'm playing acting diamonds for the third time. It really is good. That's what I'm saying. It's good. It's good. Oh, I said it's good. Is it better than Tattoo You? No. It's not better than tattoo you. I'll give I'll, you give me your hackney diamonds or whatever, and I'll you know uh, I'll take your uh, I'll give you a hackney diamonds. You give me tattoo you if I didn't already own it, and I'm going to buy the album, Johnny. I'm going to buy my <laughs> hackney diamonds. It's not like I'm not buying what version? The album. What version are you buying? What's well. your team? I want the Toronto one. Toronto uh, Blue Jays. Yeah, is that, is that what we're getting? Team. Well, okay. the question is how much. How much of these records? So it looks like they're going to be selling a lot of these records, these physical copies, these LPs. So a year from now, how much is the record going to be selling for on the uh, both new copies that are still <laughs> still in the store and used copies after people have played them a little while? Okay, where's Ruthann? I know Ruthann. Where are you? We need you back. God, she's kind of. Are, just, are they going to be? What what's the price on it now? What's the retail price on the Rolling Stones album now? Uh, the forty dollars, huh? What, what's it going for? Forty? I'd is imagine, it, right? For an LP? Yeah, I, is it one LP or two LPs? I think it's one. Yeah, one I'd LP? probably go for like forty five, forty. What I'm, what wow. I'm worried about. What That's I'm worried about money. is um. It is. Sorry, Craig. What I'm Marvin, about. that was a good music minute. Now, did the how was the, the screen and everything today? Was it more stable? I got a wire, hard wired in. Yeah, it looks better. Yeah. Oh, so things good. it didn't go sputtering as much. No, no. All right. Well, that may be an indication. So what, I, what I'm worried about. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, the panic collective every time. Uh, is this okay? It's not. That I like it only on its merit. I'm just proud of them for throwing it in the face of naysayers. Well, I don't think anybody's saying nay to the Rolling Stones. No. Thank you, Stefan. That's really good. We wanted to have a solid connect, so it seems that we solved the problem. So is the regular black vinyl 30 bucks? Oh, man. Let's go look at it. Let's see if it's available on Amazon, for example. So, Rachel? Yeah. 
Um, do you know if it's been out? Like, I'm I'm really worried about this because I've like I've I put out I don't know what it was forty some odd dollars. It was for the uh, the uh, blue um, vinyl, but I'm like I've been trying to communicate with them a couple of times by email, and just I don't really get. It's from you Canada, you Music Canada or something. Yeah. And I order I ordered it through the rollingstones.com. Yeah. Through, through them, right? Because that's who yeah. they recommended, right? But yeah. I'm kind of worried that I might not even get it the way things are going, it seems. You'll uh, get it. I don't You'll get it. Anybody else yeah. You'll, it. You'll get it. You'll not not get it. You'll not not get it. You will get this. Yeah, I'm album. just wondering if everybody else got got it already or it's oh, um, if some people if you like sometimes Lord. pre-orders don't come through. Amazon right now is saying it's available from November 10th to December 1st if you order right now. Yes, this is in Canada. Uh, I have listened to it, Jason. I listened to it on YouTube, the full album. I spun it. Uh, you know, digitally, my response is that it was a good album. They certainly play, they have a nice blues number on there. They certainly do a panache, an ode uh, to Gimme Shelter. You could even call the song Gimme Shelter Part Two. In fact, it's got the band going, and then Lady Gaga comes in and joins them, very much uh, uh, reminding me of Gimme Shelter, uh, the way that works. It's a good song, it's high energy, lushly produced. The low end is all there, good bass. I listen to it with my Atmos sound bar, you know. So it's a great album. It's a good album. Don't. It's not a great album. It's a good album. Ooh. Uh, the new that, that comment from Norman is a little yeah. strong. Yeah, it's he's nuts. He's got. He's lost his mind. So uh, we're, we're talking maybe a twenty-seven ninety-nine record album. in the U.S. Oh, twenty-eight so, ninety-nine, twenty-seven ninety-nine, something like so that. So it's anyway. going for. 40, it's thirty. Uh, it's thirty in the in the states. Yeah, just it's forty as, bucks know, Canadian, yeah. so thirty. Standard US. black vinyl. Thirty. So, US. Okay, after the frenzy, a month from now, two months from now. Yeah. The, the record stores are going to that, that bought a hundred copies, sold ninety of them. They're going to have five or ten still sitting in the racks. Eight ninety nine. Get marked down as special. Twenty four ninety nine or something yeah. like that. See, I would rate it better than a C plus. I would give it a B grading, a solid B, not even a B minus. I'd just give it a good B, seventy five percent. Boom. Uh, <coughs> Strong B. Uh, Jason I goes. Agree with Elliot. George, yeah. George got it for twenty five. <laughs> I agree. With Elliot I agree. The yeah, I agree on the originality. There's nothing innovative or new here. It's stuff we've all heard before, but it's executed beautifully in full stones uh, ability. A little more reverb on uh, Jagger's voice at eighty. How old he is? Uh, so it's got a little more reverb than you may think or that you're, you'd be used to with his vocal, but that's okay. It's it's a good album. So my advice is to, if you really want it, wait two months, three months. They'll they'll run a sale on Amazon or a record store will offer 15 or 20% off. Get it then. Don't get caught up in the FOMO. And, or don't get it and buy a, a, new, a new or upcoming artist or a struggling artist album with fresh ideas and fresh music. Just about. Uh, I could do that. Okay. And also, um, I want to go to George Borden. He's got a good comment. He's saying it's going to sell out. Yeah. Uh, so this no, is. Just keep, they'll just keep pressing more. It's the Rolling Stones. They have 32 different versions on colored vinyl with know, baseball teams on thing. it. I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah. I, I have a feeling there should not be like the Rolling Stones a special press that they're doing. It's not like the Rolling Stones don't have the wherewithal to if it's still selling and there's they've they've sold everything to repress. Plus exactly. you can say it's sold out, but that means it's sitting in a retailer's store somewhere, not that actual human beings have bought it. It's sit it's sitting in a lot, those records are sitting in a lot of places and may well sell out depending on how many the, the retailer ended up purchasing at one time. But but they're gonna repress it, obviously. I think I think I think um what Elliot's saying is kind of correct in some ways that um because it's I think everybody does that. They we all get caught up in the frenzy like I want this first before the other person, you know, to say I got it type thing. 
And that's that's part. I think that's they know what they're doing. That's I think that's that's good marketing. That's what the good what marketers they're, they're trying to do. You know, they're, they're, to get people to, into the frenzy thing. And I'm hoping, in some ways, Elliot's not right that uh, the the price of it will drop really low because I I'm hoping that it'll, the one that I got anyway or whatever goes up in price and value, not down. But I mean, who knows, right? What's going to happen in a month or two? Well, somebody I mean, said that on Discogs, they've are the those opportunistic flippers have are putting it up on Discogs for a highly yeah, marked up price. Right. Yeah, but I saw that. that that that'll drop again, you know. I, yeah, and let's be real about this yeah. thing. First press, second press. Is this a digitally produced album, George Borden? Yeah. You know, is this a triple A? I don't think so. So probably you got not. yourself a digital album here, probably pressed at Abbey Road. Mm. Uh the new Stones album is really good. I've been listening to it nonstop. I say it's good yesterday, paper. By the way, I watched your April 66 video. Fantastic. Up to the stuff as always. Uh, great stuff. And you have Joe Mika discussed in that episode. And all the great acts like David Boy, Rod Stewart, guys that were making uh, waves in, or maybe a little, not maybe not so much waves, but they were certainly getting on the map in the mid-60s, 66 in this case, who later become household names in the 1970s. And a lot of that happening in out and around that time. Some experimental sounds there that was surprising, interesting to hear. And, of course, uh, groups that I loved it at the time or that I was aware of because their pop sensibility is the uh, Trogs with the Wild Thing. Okay. Uh, I prepared a few things. I realized it was an effort. In futility, what happened, Ruth Ann? Let me know in the comments below because you're welcome to come up and do your pre prepared bit anytime her, you want. Her time got interrupted. Yeah, but she can come back and I know, do I it. Know. You know, we'll she, stay on. Ruth Ann, it's never futility. All you have to do is say, clear the stage. Rachel, I got a prepared moment for you. And then I go, okay, Ruth Ann, what do you got? Just like Craig. If Craig can get through a soul minute, for the love of God, the stuff he has. <laughs> it ain't easy. Guns. It ain't easy. It is, uh, it's like bowling teeth. Greg, yeah. Greg, I think Greg really does a lot of good presentations when he comes in. I like this guy very much. Yeah, it was really, it was, you I know, like, your I like stuff his cheeks are reddening over here. Uh, no, I like your, I like your, going on no, over I like here. your, 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 your attitude and your, your yeah. fun, funness in, in it. Like, you know, the offer is always there for you. And you know, as Johnny's, Johnny's comment here, I'll add to it for the price of that Rolling Stones record, yeah, you yeah. could go buy five records that Craig has shown and get five Easily times five. the great music value uh of i mean not, i'm not i'm not disparaging the rolling stones but there's so many great albums out there from the past that nobody's buying that, it, that they're missing out on the soul records that craig shows are a wonderful example the yeah. singer songwriters from the 70s other than other than joni mitchell and uh maybe gordon light even not even gordon light but joni mitchell almost all those great singer songwriters, their albums are out there in excellent condition and they're great music, but they're not the, the vinyl buying public is not pursuing those records and that they're there for $5 or $10 or $2 or a dollar. And okay. people expand now, your horizons. Yeah, Don't Gordon limit Lightfoot. yourself Gordon to Lightfoot this was, narrow uh, lane of music. Yeah. I mean, right, I want to I want to go, like, I, wanna go to, I wanna talk to George about this. But, Triple B A means nothing. Doesn't it mean something with first pressing? If you're just dealing with the digital file, then it doesn't matter if it's the first pressing, second pressing, third pressing, fourth pressing. It's just digital, so it doesn't fucking matter. But if it's a triple A, then I think it matters. Let me know about that, George Borden. Let, let me let me conclude by saying this. How many times people can you listen? The Fleetwood Mac's wonderful album Rumors, the Beatles Sgt. Peppers, the Rolling Stones Exile on Main Street, or the new albums put out by Legacy Acts. How many times can you the Boston's debut album? They're all there's nothing wrong. They're all good albums. But 
how many times can you listen to this before you got to say, I want to hear other creative artists from both the past and the present and, and buy other stuff. It's crazy. I'm preaching. Change it up. Uh, Everyone needs to change it, it up. I uh, John Marino loves what you're saying there. Uh, George Moore, 99% of all records there are recorded into a computer. So there is no AAA production. So uh, what's his name uh, that, uh, you know, Kevin Gray with his AAA production set, that's all uh, magic and mirrors. It doesn't exist. You know, he's talking about uh, getting a, uh, what do you call it, analog microphones in there to record this whole thing. All that's just, uh, what is that, uh, mirrors? What are we talking about there, George? Holy smokes. The stuff I have to deal with this board and get. Well, you know, you, you can, digital's not a dirty word. Uh, uh, the right mix, the right mastering, and uh, the right, ma that works for an analog source like or analog final product like vi a vinyl record can be achieved. A great sound can be achieved using steps that in are... Yeah, everybody knows that. That's not what I'm talking about. The I know, but that's what people think this... Yeah. No, I'm talking about replicating... I'm talking about the replication of the, of the album. Like, people go nuts for first pressing because they sound good. You want to get those stampers. You want to get that dead wax. We look in the matrix. We go, hey, you want the A? The one A, uh, the, and you need the two B on that, baby. That's the pressing you want. Yeah. But then when it's all digital, it doesn't fucking matter. We just put them out, put them out, put them out. No degradation of signal. Your, your it's the stamper same may wear out. Boom, 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 boom. The only issue would be if the stamper... Uh, that out, doesn't right? even matter. That doesn't matter because it's just printing exactly from the same digital source. Yep. Pop, 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 yeah, pop, I mean, pop. but the stamper can eventually... Cut them out, run them out. Cut them out, run them out. But yeah, can but if the you're stamper going to eventually there, uh, degradate, yeah, yeah. Uh, lose lose some of its quality just from wearing out, from being run? I, I, I don't know, but I would think it would be able to. So you'd need to just do a new stamper using the same uh, source tape, whether it's a digital tape or a or, okay, or now he goes, no, that's not accurate. Well, you got to teach me, George. You're the producer. You're the one I that's take in off, the studio. Folks. You tell me. Love you oh. all. As, uh, that's great to see you. Of on the take stove care. Has nothing great to, do to see you guys today. The way it does. It's modern mixing mastering. To be in your face. Not my favorite approach, but to be expected. Well, I mean, that's another factor. I mean, you can't just take one independent thing. You've got to take the whole as a as a collective. Uh, I, I think I asked this question before. How how do you how do you know if a record's like first second press? I, I can't remember what you read it in the dead wax. Time. The dead wax tells the story. There's little letters and numbers. Oh okay. In in the the run out, it's called the run out. So your stylus yeah. finished the record and runs out. If you hold that up and you look at any I don't have a record handy. Well, I do actually. So anyway, this is Michael Pilmer's latest album, or not his latest, but it's one he's put out. And so you go in, here's your record, even if it's colored like this marble. So then you grab the record, and then you look here, and in this in this section right here where the where your style is going to go, there's all, there's going to be some writing in there. Oh, okay. And telling about, and there'll be a, a series of letters. There it is. This is like. Uh, it says uh, SPG one 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 six zero X zero six dash C, and those uh, lettering and and alphanumeric combinations are unique to this pressing. The next one will they press this again? They go back to the factory, make more of them with a, a different stamper the whole bit. Then you're going to get new numbers in that. It's going to be a different pressing on. So it. these numbers though, like how. Um, the thing is, it doesn't say like I thought it maybe would say like one or two or three, like third pressing second. No, so these no, no, it doesn't do that. So you go so by you the know. year it's released, and then everybody knows the year it's released, they get that one, and it goes from there. So you have to look up these numbers basically on Discog or something, or how, how would you? Yeah, Discogs is a quick way. Dic Discogs is pretty reliable yeah. because you got so many people pouring over Discogs. Talking about the pressing, talking about idiosyncratic elements like, oh, the little I is over the O in this number and this one. That's how you uh -huh. tell if it's an early press. 
There's a whole bunch of various uh, individualistic science per pressing that help people understand an older right. record what pressing it is. Uh -huh. uh, it took the Stones four years to make Hackney Diamonds. They didn't care so much about making new music. Okay, so well, it was over for you. No, that's true. That wasn't their focus. Uh, 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 with uh, book success, first pressing, not with records, correct. And George Borden goes, uh, well, I got to see the context for the comment. But he's talking about if they use the same parts. Uh, so it depends. But there's variables in the in the different pressings. When the lacquer, lacquer's cut, it gets assigned the number. But then uh, the lacquer is good for, what, 10,000 records or something, at which point uh, generally they get a second lacquer made, and then that becomes the uh, second pressing of the record. Uh, Mazzy's talking about the uh, construction of the album Hackney Dimes. They had several songs started some years ago. The majority of the album was recorded and mixed in about six weeks' time. Uh, um, cutting the lacquer is an analog process, absolutely. Whether or not the source is digital, correct. That's right. I understand that. Uh, Anyway, you know what's happened? Sue's just presented breakfast. These things get cold awfully quick, and there's nothing worse than a cold. Peanut butter on toast, I'm telling you. Folks, we've been here three hours, 34 minutes. I want to thank everybody for watching the show, especially Elliot Cruz and Johnny L. Here at to see the final conclusion. Everybody, we'll talk this. We'll leave the last word to George Borden. Alaka gets plated and becomes a father. Then that dances with the mother, and then, they, then you got yourself a little record. All right, everybody. There you go. Then you make your multiple mothers. There we go. We've seen it before. Go buy a, a what you call it? Yeah, uh, Mobile Fidelity. They the show the, the daddy and the mommy and all that. And the little babies are made. Take care, everybody. Bye for now. Poof. Bye.